A very good morning to all of you, and sorry for delay in starting of the program. I, Miss Sheetal Acharya, welcomes all of you on the third day of E Faculty Development Program on Pharmaceutical Product Development Challenges and Opportunity. The program is hosted by Dr. L H Hiranandani College of Pharmacy and Ulas Nagar and. Konkan Kyan Peet Rahul Derkar College of Pharmacy and Research Institute Karjat in collaboration with Indian Pharmaceutical Association and APTI without wasting much time i introduce our first speaker of today's session mr kunal gokhale sir is having 14 years of rich experience in academics currently sir is working as assistant professor at dr l h hiranandani college of pharmacy His major area of research are process development and synthesis of new chemical entity for anti-tuberculosis and anti-cancer drugs, green chemistry polymer synthesis and its application. Sir, uh, uh, he has one Indian patent in his credential. He has been guided to around eleven PG students so far. Sir has published nine research articles in various peer-reviewed national and international journals. Sir has received six project grants so far, funded by various institutes. I welcome you, sir, on the behalf of organizing committee, and uh, and uh, request you to start this session. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I will just share my screen, and then we will start. Okay. Okay, sir. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. yes yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Shital Madam, for uh, such a wonderful uh, introduction. Uh, I will uh, just uh, thank organizing committee. Uh, for giving me the opportunity to discuss the various avenues associated with the polymer development and modifications uh, so just start with so uh, it, uh, polymers are first introduced in the field of pharmacy uh, when usp in its 20th edition for the first time introduced the quality control test for the high density polypropylene and since then we are using the polymers in various applications in the field of pharmacy we are using the polymers in the form of containers for our chemicals uh, in the form of uh, for the bulk chemicals we are using them we are using them as an uh, binder in our formulations as a uh, disintegrants so various natural and uh, synthetic polymers we are using in the field of pharmacy so in this particular so in this particular uh, presentation in this particular presentation i am going to discuss the some fascinating properties of the polymers that attracted us work in last couple of years in the field of uh, polymer modification then why tailoring of the polymers are necessary how to synthesize the various polymers how to why to modify what is the need to modify then i will focus uh, some case studies uh, present in the literature applications uh, marketed products basically uh, which will give you an idea about the different fields in which you can use the modified polymers and uh, what and lastly i will uh, introduce you to some of the research work that we are carrying out at our institute in the field of polymer polymers so polymers have a very fascinating properties like for example polymers have the very high degree of a substitution now degree of a substitution means the number of uh, functional groups present uh, per repetitive units like for example we know that the polymers are nothing but the repetitive units of a monomer so a, a polymer will have many functional groups like coh oh and nh2 that we can modify so uh, uh, depending upon how many number of coh are present per repetitive unit we can calculate the degree of a substitution for a particular polymer so depending upon the molecular weight of a polymer and the length of a polymer uh, the polymers have a very very high degree of a substitution where you can substitute and you can make uh, the polymer as per your need 
And then another important uh, property of the polymer is polymers have a low density because of which we are using the polymers as a packaging material uh, since long years. Then polymers have a low coefficient of friction because of which they are very, very ideal candidates for uh, uh, excipients in the formulation of a solid unit dosage form. Another important property is that polymers have a very good corrosion resistance. They have a very good uh, molding ability also, so we can mold them and we can use them as we like. Then they have then uh, polymers. Uh, we can obtain the polymer with an excellent surface finish. Another are they have they have a very poor tensile strength. They have poor, they have a very poor temperature resistance. And we can design as per our need either a transparent polymers or a polymers of varied color as we like uh, for uh, to increase the aesthetic appeal of our product. So uh, uh, I can say we can engineer the polymer as per near, uh, as per our need, and it's very very well possible if we have a basic knowledge of the chemistry and basic knowledge of the synthetic chemistry. We are familiar with the synth synthetic polymers like PEG, nylon, Teflon, and PVC, and some of the natural polymers like silk, wool, and starch. So since last some of the years, I am uh, working in the field of a natural polymers rather to go for. Uh, uh, synthetic polymers, and I'm working on some of the off-bit polymers. Like I'm not working on HPMC, Chitosan, and the polymers which are highly explored. I'm working on some of the off-bit polymers that I will show you some of the structures. So uh, why I'm working is uh, here are the some of the properties of the polymers that attracted me to work in this field. So natural polymers are highly water soluble polymers. Because of the high water solubility of the polymer, they can absorb the very large amount of water. And when they absorb very large amount of water, they swell. It has been observed that a polymer can swell about thousand times to its solid volume, which will make our swelled polymer uh, uh, porous. And uh, then we can, if the our polymer is porous, then we can use it for various uh, drug delivery systems. So polymer after uh, swelling form the very loose hydrated network, which we can explore for the drug delivery systems. Then another very important characteristic of a natural polymer is that the polymers are biodegradable. The, the various metabolizing enzymes present uh, uh, are present in a human body for the metabolism of the polymers. Like we have the hyaluronase enzyme, we have esterase enzymes, because of which the natural polymers are very easily biodegradable, found to be biodegradable. So there, there is no issue of biodegradability of the polymer that we face, uh, especially uh, in the case of plastics, polypropylene and polyvinylene kind of uh, polymer. Next important aspect is polymers are biocompatible. Now, uh, various polymers are found to be a part of our extracellular matrix like hy hyaluronan I have discussed. So hyaluronan is a part of extracellular matrix. Then many of the polymers are also important in uh, maintaining the viscoelasticity, viscoelasticity of the liquid connective like synovial fluid and aqueous humor. So if you want to develop, if you want to deliver a drug to a particular site, we can make the use of this particular property of the polymer. Then polymers are responsible for tissue hydration and the water transport. Then uh, they also mediate the receptor mediated function. It has been observed that uh, cancer cells are very uh, high expressions. They have very high expression of CD4 receptors on their surfaces. And these CD4 receptors on the surface of the cancer cells uh, attract the hyaluronan kind of a carbohydrate polymers towards itself. So if you are facing any kind of a difficulty in uh, delivering the drug to the targeted cancer cell, then we can make the use of these polymers as a carrier or a conjugating system, and we can increase the target specificity of the cancer drug. Then polymers are important in a tissue repair. They have also role in a cell proliferation and a migration and also the cell differentiation. And the most important is polymers have not currently available polymers, currently known polymers are non, not uh, shown any kind of antigenicity or any kind of uh, immunogenicity. Then uh, as far as the molecular weight of uh, polymers or natural polymers are concerned, they are present in a wide range of a molecular weight. They are uh, present in the low molecular weight, moderate molecular weight and high molecular weight polymers also. So uh, uh, we have generally the uh, currently available natural polymers, currently known natural polymers are ranging from 0.1 uh, megadalton to 10,000 megadalton molecular weight. So after discussing the uh, uh, various fascinating properties of the polymer, uh, now these are the some of the polymers in recent years uh, scientists are majorly focusing upon. These all are from the natural origin and they are 
available in the various uh, degrees of a molecular weight uh, like kulilan hyaluronic acid and a counter contracting sulfate so now just let us begin with what is the need for uh, synthesizing the uh, polymer uh, so as i already told the polymers have the variety of functional groups so you can synthesize polymers uh, as per your need if if your polymer contains coh then you can convert them into amides you can convert them into ester if it is hydroalcoholic if it is alcoholic then you can convert it into ether so wide range of functionality modifications is possible in the case of polymer Uh, so you can make the hydrophilic polymer to more hydrophilic polymer you can increase the water solubility by just modifying the functional groups you can make the uh, polymer your natural polymer uh, ph sensitive thermal sensitive uh, stabilized to oxidation uh, kind of reactions where majority of the drugs face to the uh, uh, degrade because of the oxidation problems so you can uh, make your polymer uh, oxidizable less oxidizable less reducible by if you have a basic synthetic knowledge of the chemistry so we have to just play with the variety of the functional groups and then we can uh, synthesize the polymer as per our need so after the polymer modification we get a change in the molecular weight so this change in the molecular weight polymer is responsible or found to be responsible for very strong intermolecular interactions these polymers which we modify are ph sensitive they are thermal sensitive now what do you mean by ph sensitivity is uh, they, these uh, polymers with uh, modified natural polymers are shown to uh, release the drug at one particular ph uh, they are stable over the wider range of acidic and wider range of a basic ph at the same time they are very found to be very very successful in, in releasing the drugs at a very particular ph so if we are facing the problem of release of a drug at a particular ph uh, then we can use this polymers modify them uh, make them ph sensitive and we can use it Uh, into our uh, carrier systems for our drug and we can increase the bioavailability or the related issues of the drug action so these are the very fascinating properties or the reasons behind why you have to modify the natural polymers so natural polymers after modification can exist in the three major types uh, it can be a chemically conjugated polymer now uh, it is a pictorial representation of what do you mean by chemical representation of polymer so here the drug can be directly attached to the polymer by uh, cross linking uh, and other is a chemical cross linking of a polymer where two polymers are attached to each other by the cross linking which we call which they also called as a grafting of a polymer like you go for graft like we know as a for uh, grafting of a plants similarly here the two two uh, polymers uh, of a different molecular weight may be two different hetero polymers may be two different homo polymers we can cross link with each other and to this cross link polymer we can uh, attach our drug or we have we can attach our biomolecules third type is a polymer is linked to the biomolecule through the linker now in this case the linker can be ester amide ether can be a uh, peptide it can be a diester it can be anything it is it depends upon us what kind of a linker we want for our uh, particular purpose now it has been shown that polymer can be it has been observed that polymers can be attached to peptides also so if we have any difficulty i think peptide drug delivery system is the most challenging system as far as we are know as far as we know so therefore we can make the use of polymer and uh, we can attach it to peptides uh, and we can uh, solve the problems of the peptide drug delivery so polymers can be attached to biomolecules also they can be attached to drug also through this linker uh, uh, various kind of linkers that are available so what what will be the fate of this polymer or for what uh, we have to modify what we are going to achieve after modification of the polymer so as i have already said there are certain drugs which are failing to action because they have a very less bioavailability they degrade due, due to the metabolism so they cannot reach to the site of action they have a very high kind of uh, lipophilicity and in this case their efficacy potency is going to matter a lot for us so if we have a polymer which can release a drug at one particular ph at one particular lock p value and if we have a polymer that we attach to our uh, drug under consideration which is facing the problem then we can increase the potency of that particular drug and efficacy of that drug by using a modified natural polymer uh, then many of the drugs have a stability issues related to ph related to thermal that is the temperature and, and related to air oxidation like uh, penicillin kind of drugs are very very sensitive to ph uh, rifampicin kind of a drug are very very sensitive to the oxidation 
so because of which they degrade on a long storage so this kind of a problems we can solve by using the modified natural polymer if we have a polymer which is uh, photostable it can be used along with the drug to stabilize the oxidation or its oxidative degradation of the drug if we have a polymer which is very very ph sensitive able to uh, st remain stable at one particular ph and able to uh, release the drug at one particular ph then we can make the use of it and we can solve the problem of uh, release of a drug associated with a ph we can increase the target specificity uh, then we can also increase the bioavailability uh, as the polymers themselves are uh, non immunogenic by using the polymers we can also decrease the immunogenicity associated i will uh, like to quote uh, the example of this in, uh, in the next slides where the immunogenicity associated with the product has been uh, decreased uh, by the scientists then if the if we have uh, any kind of a uh, clearance related problem of the drug then we can solve it by using the polymers because polymers do not have any kind of uh, uh, not observed any kind of a clearance related problem so that polymer we can use we can modify it and uh, we can use it with the help of uh, for our drug and we can solve the difficulties associated with the clearance related problems of the drug they can polymer can be acting as a carrier carrier for uh, bioconjugates like insulin uh, is used insulin is attached to the one of the modified natural polymer Uh, as a carrier system so we can use it a uh, polymer can be used as a carrier system or as a conjugate system and once we have done this we can uh, convert them into the suitable formulation as uh, as uh, we require like we can convert them into the nanoparticulate systems we can convert them into the microspheres hydrogels we generally what i want to summarize is once you have uh, uh, once you know what exactly have you have to do and where you have to modify and for what you have to modify then polymer is the field which where you can play like anything and you can do any kind of modifications and uh, you can have the, you can solve the problems associated with the delivery of the drug or the formulation of the drug so just let us begin with uh, how to modify the polymer now we have seen the various uh, aspects of various fascinating properties of the polymers uh, after looking into the need for the polymer modification now we will switch to the synthesizing the polymers now this particular slide will tell you the typical path of a, a synthesis of a, a polymer synthesis of a natural naturally modified polymer now uh, it is this procedure looks very simple but it is not that simple i will explain you how it is so very first we have to select a polymer of one particular molecular weight uh, uh, as per your need you have to uh, ask for one particular uh, molecular weight polymer and you have to use it now after selection of a polymer then you have to decide you have to go for the chemically derivatization of the polymer that is nothing but a chemical reaction so in this chemical reaction of a product a chemical reaction of a modified polymer you have to focus upon the various aspects it is not simple as you are uh, taking a carboxylic acid one mole you are taking a, a acetic anhydride or acetyl chloride one mole and you just uh, have the ester which is uh, depending upon the limiting reagent of uh, this particular reaction it is not as that but it is not very difficult also you have to just apply a little bit of uh, your knowledge about the polymer that is nothing but a degree of a polymer so how much to derivatize where to derivatize is depending upon the structure of a polymer and how to derivatize is also depending upon the synthetic chemistry of the polymer like i have told the polymers have a varied degree of a substitution so depending upon the degree of a substitution of the polymer number of the repetitive units of the polymer you can decide how many number of moles of the polymer you have to take and how many number of moles of the reactant you have to take and once you are through with this then you have to optimize the reaction and you will uh, aim to increase the yield of the polymer so this is with respect to the molar ratio of the chemical molar ratio of the polymer parent polymer and the molar ratio of the reactant of uh, your choice then another important aspect while optimizing the polymeric reactions is the solvents now uh, as we are uh, working with a natural polymer the ideal solvent for us is uh, definitely a water so many of the reactions of polymer are carried out in the water known to carried out in the water and we have also carried out in aqueous system but uh, so there is uh, some compatibility issues with respect to the reagent chemical reagents not with the polymer but with the chemical reagent some of the chemical reagents are found to be non compatible with the uh, water they are not found to be miscible with the water they are more soluble in organic solvents or uh, 
uh, acrotic solvent so what to do in that case uh, what we do is we can make a polymeric solution in aqueous system and then we can make our uh, reagent we can uh, mix our reagent in a other system which is compatible with a uh, polymer like uh, we can use a methanol and ethanol for dissolving our reagent and we can use a water for dissolving our polymer and once our polymer solution is ready we can ready we can mix the two and we can uh, go for we can go further for the reaction so the solvent aspect you have to take into consideration while working with the polymer modification or uh, while carrying out the polymer reactions now another important aspect with the solvent is the polymers some of the polymers tend to swell in the case uh, in some of the solvent systems so if after swelling your polymer will form a gel like solution uh, gel like consistency the polymeric solution will have or if after a mixing in one particular solvent if your polymer will form a turbid solution then it is not suitable for the reaction your reaction will not go uh, as you require as you want very successful reaction you will not achieve if your product if your polymer is uh, getting precipitated out of the reaction after mixing it with the uh, uh, solvent system or if it is forming a gel like consistency uh, after mixing it with the solvent system uh, so you have to take care about that the polymer after mixing into the reactant should form a clear solution now general mechanism of uh, polymer and the solvent is when you mix the polymer with the solvent uh, polymer will generally get uh, hydrated uh, then they swell and after they are swelling they open up the all the possible functional groups uh, that are present in the polymer structure and there you can derivatize uh, it has been observed that some of the polymers will also take uh, will take 48 hours to get swell and to form a clear solution so you have to be very thorough with the polymer that you are working with about their solubility of the polymer and then you can work upon it uh, and you, by using the various kind of reactions uh, of uh, synthetic chemistry next is the solubility and the temperature now uh, it has been observed that some of the polymers are soluble in a solvent but at a one particular temperature like uh, sodium carboxymethyl cellulose is soluble in a solvent at uh, at a soluble in the water at a very at a 60 to 80 degree of a, a temperature uh, whereas it is found to be insoluble at a room temperature therefore uh, you have to also take care about uh, your polymer is solubilized in a solvent at what particular temperature so that temperature you have to maintain throughout the reaction uh, while uh, carrying out the synthetic reaction of the polymer modification then uh, once you have done that once you have decided what solvent you have to use once you have decided the temperature of the polymer reaction that you have to maintain the next thing is uh, about uh, uh, its uh, uh, molar ratio so i think i have already discussed about the molar ratio about the degree of substitution of the polymer and uh, how to and how, what to what what different things to take into consideration while selecting the molar ratios of the two or three different reactants along with the polymer and a very important aspect of the chemical reaction or the natural or the modification of the natural polymer is the monitoring of the reaction now here a synthetic chemist uh, plays a very important role because whenever we have a our normal synthetic chemistry Uh, like a synthesis of uh, green chem synthesis of a green of uh, uh, chem a new chemical entity synthesis of a new drug in process development when we generally carry carry out we generally use a uh, tlc as a technique to modify uh, to monitor the progress of the reaction and uh, in that case we generally take the aliquots of the reactants reaction mixture at a one particular interval and we go on uh, observing the tlc and we decide depending upon the tlc whether our reaction is progress whether whether whether, whether our reaction is progressing in a forward direction or uh, it is forming a product or not forming a product whether it is successful how how much for how much time it has to be uh, run it, it everything we de depend upon the tlc for monitoring or uh, the progress of the reaction in a synthetic chemistry but now in this case please remember the polymers do not have any kind of a chromophore so therefore monitoring the reaction monitoring the polymeric reaction with the tlc is a little bit difficult you will not able to understand whether your reaction is progressive or not progressing in a forward direction by using a tlc then what is the option for it yes definitely there is an option uh, if it is related to the solubility of the polymer and related to the ph of the polymer 
Now, if you are starting polymer and if you are end polymer or water soluble, uh, then you have to go for monitoring the pH of the polymeric reaction. And if you know that you are starting material and starting polymer and your end uh, material, end uh, modified polymer have a difference in the solubility, then you can use the solubility uh, monitoring or solubility uh, uh, age separation, I can say, uh, for monitoring the progress of reaction. Meaning what? Uh, means if you are uh, natural polymer, now you have seen some of the structures of a polymer. Now, if the polymer contains no it, then it will be weakly acidic in nature. And if you want to make an ester, for example, of that particular uh, polymer, then uh, as you start with the reaction, your initial pH of the reaction will be acidic, weakly acidic. And as you progress further to the reaction, as the, as the reaction uh, goes to the forward direction, your pH is goes on changing and it will end, it will, it will go, show you one stage uh, where your pH of the reaction becomes neutral. So that will indicate to you are achieving or you are on a right track. Your reaction is going in a forward direction. And depending upon that, you can decide now I have to stop the reaction or I have to work further for the reaction. This is with respect to the polymer and end polymer if they have a solubility issue. Uh, if, the, if they have a water solubility, that means both of them are equally soluble in the water. Now, if the another aspect is if your parent molecule, parent polymer, and if you are a modif modified polymer, have a little bit of uh, difference in a solubility, then you can make the use of this uh, particular aspect also while modifying the while monitoring the progress of uh, polymeric reaction. Now your initial polymer is highly water soluble. So as the reaction progresses, the polymers, the reaction mixture will try to become or try to uh, become a turbid. And at one stage, your uh, 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 reaction mixture will uh, separate out the polymer, separate out the derivative of polymer, like uh, it is like a phase of separation. So your polymer, uh, modified polymer will start precipitating out at, from the reaction mixture. And uh, because the end uh, polymer have a certain difference in the water solubility and your starting polymer have, uh, starting polymer is highly soluble in the water. So you have to, uh, you have to go on monitoring it at what, what particular time, at what particular temperature of the polymeric reaction, the polymer is phase separating out from the uh, phase, so phase separation. Uh, so this you can make the use of and you can monitor the progress of reaction. It depend upon it, uh, this particular uh, aspect uh, with our polymer has been precipitated from the reaction phase separation of the polymer is depending upon the cloud point for the polymer. Now cloud point is nothing but the temperature at which your polymer will precipitate from the solution. So if your polymer is soluble and if your uh, end product is having certain difference in the uh, water solubility, then you can clearly monitor, you can clearly see your polymer has been phase separated out and at that particular point you can stop the polymeric reaction and you can further send it to further uh, steps of the uh, reaction. Now once you are ready with your uh, polymer, once you have optimized all the parameters, uh, you will be successful in getting the higher yields of the polymer. Now what to do with the polymer next? Once you have this crude polymer, I can say it is a crude polymer because it is not purified, then it is subjected to purification. Now in this case again the purification is not that we know as a recrystallization or a distillation kind of aspects. Polymeric, uh, modified polymeric solution has to be subjected to the dialysis. And it will be passed through the dialysis membrane and the dialysis will give you a purified uh, polymeric solution. You have to choose the dialysis membrane uh, depending upon our need. Uh, dialysis membranes of different uh, pore size are available. We have to make sure about uh, the what kind of poly dialysis membrane when we use the dialysis membrane will retain the polymeric solution. So in the dialysis bag, the polymeric solution uh, should be retained and other uh, uh, things should be uh, left out of the dialysis bag. So you have to uh, take care, you have to decide very properly what, what should be the pore size of the dialysis membrane and that dialysis membrane you have to use for purification of the polymer. Then once you have purified, once you have passed your polymeric solution to the uh, dialysis membrane, then next you have to subject it to lyophilization to get the solid polymer in your hand. And once you have the solid dried polymer in your hand, then you have to subject it to characterization. Now characterization, uh, like we go for, it is very similar like we go for a natural, uh, very, uh, our own synthetic chemistry. 
you have to go for an nmr proton nmr and a cnmr will help you in the determining the structure of the polymer then dsc will help you to determine the melting point of the polymer mass will also help you to determine the molecular weight of the polymer uh, uh, you, you can also go for uh, measurement of the molecular weight of the mod, uh, obtained polymer or the synthesized polymer by using the viscosity aspect you you can use the viscometer for uh, me measuring the viscosity of the polymeric solutions and from that you can determine the molecular weight of the synthesized uh, polymer uh, if you want to determine the purity of the polymeric solutions polymer that has been formed you can also go for glc uh, you can also go for gc or hplc if you need if you want a very high degree of purity purified uh, polymer uh, then you can also go for gc analysis you can also go for hplc analysis to get a pure pure uh, uh, product in your hand now one thing i want to mention with respect to nmr aspect of the polymer now please remember whenever you observe the nmr of the polymer you should be very very critical and thorough with the values of the nmr where the signals are going to come you should be very very thorough with it because the polymer itself have a lot and lot many number of carbons and whenever you have a uh, Uh, polymeric uh, modified polymer in your hand again you are going to introduce uh, 10 to 15 more number of carbons in it so you should be very very critical in analyzing the nmr of the uh, starting material and nmr of the end product and then you can only uh, uh, say whether your polymer has been formed or polymer has been not formed so what i want to say is you should be very very thorough with the nmr interpretation of the polymer Uh, next thing is once you have uh, purified polymer after the, this instrumental uh, characterizations of the polymer like nmr and uh, ir and uh, mass you can also you have you have to check i say you have to check the ph uh, stability of the polymer and the thermal stability of the polymer what you have to do is you have to make a polymeric solution and you have to subject it to the various kind of phs like uh, some of the acidic ph and also expose uh, expose your polymeric solution to the alkaline uh, medium and you have to find out whether the polymer is going to stay separated your polymer is form a turbid solution at one particular ph so that that is a kind of signal for you that at what ph you have to work and at what ph you should not work uh, so ph and the thermal stability is a very very important aspect of the modified natural polymer after the polymer you will get in your hand another thing is you can go for a particle size zeta potential if you are aiming for uh, any uh, nano particle drug delivery system for the polymer you can yes you can also go for swelling index you can also go for gelling uh, capacity you can also go for film forming capacity if you are aiming for uh, for for aiming for, for some kind of uh, edible film some kind of uh, uh, transdermal preparations then uh, film forming capacity of the polymer is highly important so you have to check that also you can also check the same characteristics you can evaluate the same characteristics same analysis Uh, where you can uh, you will come to know about the porosity about the surface uh, uh, view of the polymer and after uh, you have the polymer in your hand then you have to convert then you have to go for a dosage form that uh, you are focusing upon and you have to uh, use all those quality control tests that are required for development of one particular dosage form by using that particular natural polymer so here i have completed the uh, uh, synthesis of the modification synthesis of the modified polymer and their characterization and the purifications and uh, optimization of the polymer polymer so uh, this i think i have completed molar ratio time and dialysis membrane of the chemical derivatization that we have to consider i have also uh, completed this the characterization of the polymer now next are i am i will like to focus about uh, uh, the current research that is going on in the polymer uh, field uh, these are the some of the case studies that are available in the literature so a uh, polymer and it will give you an idea uh, about how you can use a polymer for various purposes uh, to solve the problems associated with the drug now here is an example of a paclitaxel now paclitaxel we know is a very good uh, anti cancer drug but uh, very well known anti cancer drug rather but suffers from the various uh, tolerability various resistance issues and various uh, side effects that is it, it, it cannot reach the proper side therefore it has a lots of side effects and to solve the associated uh, side effects with the paclitaxel scientists tried to conjugate it with a hyaluronic acid and the hyaluronic acid so here you can see the structure this is a hyaluronic acid it's the paclitaxel molecule which are linked to each other by the diester linker so they call it as an oncophid 
and after their successful development they launch the product under the brand name of an oncofield p so it is a very successful case study i would say in the field of paclitaxel development and uh, it has shown the very promising results where free paclitaxel is uh, found to uh, compare to the free paclitaxel ha with paclitaxel combination is found to be very very safe very very tolerable uh, for the treatment of, of the ovarian cancer so it has been recommended this particular uh, product is used currently for the treatment of ovarian cancer uh, now this particular conjugate ha with the paclitaxel hyaluronic acid with the paclitaxel has the ic50 value of 0.06 microgram per ml whereas free drug have an ic50 value of 0.3 microgram per ml so we can see how much drastic difference your polymer can make uh, with respect to the cell uptake to the ic50 values when they were when they are associated with the uh, cancer cells or when uh, when the uh, we have to see the take of a drug into the cancer cell or the cell viability issues then uh, how great a difference your polymer uh, can make we can uh, take the example of this particular case and after the successful discovery of this paclitaxel ha conjugation this particular group of scientists has also started developing the oncofeed platform for the delivery of a doxorubicin and for the delivery of the campofisin campofisin so this oncofeed now they are using as a platform they are using as a carrier system uh, delivery of the various drugs like doxorubicin and campofisin in the, for improving their uh, problems Uh, with those particular drugs so now another example is uh, how a uh, one particular aspect of the polymer we are uh, taking we are considering it as an opportunity now hy- hyaluronic acid has a very low short half life now generally we do not take a drug we, we want to modify those drugs which are uh, uh, having a very short biological half life we don't want such kind of a drugs which are having very short uh, half life so science, so pharmacists are always in a uh, thinking to modify the bioavailability associated to increase the short life of the drug so that the drug will be retained there drug will be remain there in a biological system for a long period of time so here the polymer itself has a short biological life short biological half life so this uh, property of the polymer is taken into consideration and uh, two drugs cortisone and ibuprofen are coupled with the hyaluronan for their suitable local administration so this is how how one particular property of the polymer that we consider generally as a disadvantage for us like very biological short life short biological half life is a challenging for us but here the scientist has used the, that particular property of the polymer and uh, uh, converted the polymer Uh, system into the very uh, effective uh, delivery system for the drug so what sant is done here cortisone and ibuprofen are known for uh, their treatment uh, in the in the treatment of arthritis so uh, arthritic patient generally have they have a very high degree of a pain which is non tolerable so therefore scientists coupled cortisone and ibuprofen with the hyaluronic acid so here you have a hyaluronic acid Uh, this is a cortisone this is an ibuprofen which are coupled to each other with respect to the diester kind of linkages or and here it is coupled with hydroxide kind of linker and this particular systems are uh, very very found very very suitable for the local administration and uh, they are very very successful in reducing the pain associated in arthritic patients so this is how you can uh, uh, convert the challenge into the opportunity with respect to the polymer uh, and the delivery of one particular drug another important aspect which i was talking about i have talked about the decrease in immunogenicity in some earlier slides by using the polymer now in this case the hyaluronic acid is coupled with the methotrexate now apart from the anti cancer use of a methotrexate we i think know that the methotrexate is a very very good uh, immunomodulator and it has been used uh, in various all those uh, reactions where the diseases are due to immunomodulation so methotrexate is also a recommended for the treatment of arthritis because it is an immunomodulator but again methotrexate have a low have a very uh, important side effects and to overcome with the side effects associated with the methotrexate scientists couple hyaluronic acid with methotrexate through pag peptide conjugate so this particular conjugate they found out uh, responsible for 
reducing the knee swelling significant reduce significantly reducing the knee swelling in antigen induced rat model and this particular uh, complex this particular conjugate i would say is uh, responsible to give a very low systemic side effects so this is how so you can decrease the immunogenicity associated with the drug by uh, using it with the uh, uh, by coupling it with the polymer and i will and uh, i will add in this case this particular further this scientist so if you look into the paper the paper will give you a clear cut idea they have also carried out about the immunogenicity studies and this particular uh, polymeric uh, conjugate is responsible to not uh, uh, giving you the immunogenicity problems associated with the methotrexate so rather this particular uh, complex particular conjugate is very very important very essential and uh, in the, and very very ideal to solve the immunogenicity problems associated with methotrexate now just here now scientist coupled here the doxorubicin again a very famous uh, anti cancer drug and a folic acid to the malleated pululan so in this case uh, malleated pululan is acting as a linker in earlier cases uh, of the doxorubicin uh, of the paclitaxel uh, cortisone propen and methotrexate hyaluronic acid itself is acting as a carrier but in this case and the different different linkers are used but in this case a polymer itself fluoride polymer itself is used as a uh, linker to link the two drugs sorbitol and doxorubicin now the major aim of the scientist in this study is the doxorubicin is very well known for its uh, serious related side effects and these related side effects are only because of a target specificity and they come into the influence of one particular enzyme Uh, when they reach into the biological systems, which uh, take them to the cardiovascular systems rather than to the very effectively rather than to the uh, cancerous systems. So therefore, to tackle the problem associated with the low bioavailability, low target specificity, and uh, high uh, uh, degradability associated with the doxorubicin, they decided to couple it with the uh, malleated pulula, and also they have taken into consideration the folic acid. because it has been observed that there are certain cancers in which the folic acid levels are found to be altered so this particular system is uh, responsible to uh, uh, take care of that altered levels of the folic acid also it will take care of the doxorubicin related uh, target specificity and the doxorubicin related uh, side effects so here you can see the images of the cancer cell lines now whenever this particular system is uh, used uh, on a cancer cell line studied for the uh, there a cancer uptake you can see the image c after point after half an hour and after 2 hours of the cell treatment with the particular conjugate you can see the concentration of the uh, conjugate system is found to be increased inside the uh, say inside the cancer cells as compared to the free doxor as compared to the free doxorubicin and as compared to the doxorubicin uh, and uh, malleated doxorubicin and the malleated conjugation systems so this is how you can use a polymer for reducing the side effect also which associated with the drug to increase the target specificity or you can link the two drugs with each other like here they have linked for folic acid and doxorubicin with each other to solve the problem associated with uh, one particular the another important thing is here the scientists have made the nano drug delivery system of the pulula and doxorubicin conjugate and this particular uh, conjugate system is found to be ph sensitive Now, if you see this particular graph, it will clearly tell you uh, the graph. The scientists have studied the release profile of the pulula and doxorubicin conjugate at two different pH, at pH number at pH five and at pH seven point four. And yeah, and you can see there is a, a doxorubicin release percent doxorubicin release is high whenever uh, uh, pH was five. Uh, compared to when the pH is seven point four. So this is what do you mean by the pH sensitive polymer? Uh, your polymer, if you design very very properly, then you can uh, use it for uh, pH uh, uh, sensitivity. You can uh, uh, use it for pH dependent release of the drug. And as uh, we know that the cancer cells, majority of the cancer cells are acidic in nature, and because of the acidic, highly acidic nature of the cancer cells, the many of the drugs uh, get degraded when they reach to the cancer cells. We can use this uh, modified polymeric system. to solve the problem associated with the degradation of the polymer degradation of the drug sorry by coupling it with the polymer 
So th this is an example of uh, pH sensitive polymer. Now here, uh, how the surface uh, is modified by using the polymer. So now here scientists have designed uh, carbox uh, chond uh, chondritin sulfate, methacrylate, and acrylic acid. They have uh, coupled the chondritin sulfate, natural polymer with a methacrylate and with acrylic acid, and uh, they have found out how much uh, uh, surface modifications they can achieve. So here is the image of unswollen polymer, and here is the image of uh, swollen polymer after swelling uh, of the polymer in the solvent. So you can see in the in the image how the polymer can be very effectively uh, swell and how effectively it become highly porous. So therefore, scientists, uh, this particular group of scientists claim that this modified this modified conjugate chondritin sulfate, uh, um, uh, methacrylate, and uh, acrylic acid uh, polymer. Is used uh, uh, for uh, controlled release with delivery of the drug. So, uh, after looking into the current uh, uh, developments that are took place in the field of a polymer or taking place in the field of a polymer, let us have a, a look into the various uh, products that are available or already available in the market by using all these modified polymers. Now, this particular polymer, or this particular modification is available in the market. Uh, as a, it is available as a gel like mixture and it contains a modified natural modified naturally uh, it, it contains uh, our natural polymer hyaluronic acid uh, which is modified by uh, some uh, chemical modifications and these modified hyaluronan is very very good found to be very very good in supplementing the fluid in the knee joint that is supplementing the synovial fluid in the knee joint which is a very very remarkable product for uh, lubricating the joints and, and uh, cushioning the joints. And uh, because of this product, the uh, physicians achieve, the physicians can reduce the uh, so pain associated in the arthritic patients. So this is the product uh, which is uh, available in the market to uh, treat the uh, pain associated, to reduce the pain associated with the arthritic patients by lubricating the joints and by supplementing the fluid in the knee joints. Next, uh, this is an FDA approved product Again, in this case, it is an anti-wrinkle gel rather, uh, which has been which is used as a single, which is used as an implant, uh, single-use implant, and this is uh, again contain a modified uh, hyaluronic acid. Uh, another uh, product that is available in the market is uh, uh, again a uh, uh, gel, Hyloform 0.1% gel, which is also having the very excellent lubricating properties, and uh, this is used as a lubricate. This is used for the lubrication of the eye. So uh, there is one particular syndrome called as dry eye syndrome where the patient loses the lubricating capacity of the eye because of certain viral or because of certain uh, infections and uh, therefore patient has to instill uh, uh, lubricating drops in his eye for for, uh, uh, for some period of uh, for some of the years of his life and therefore the uh, currently the original products were containing HP, MC and H HP kind of a polymer for lubrication but recently uh, this uh, HPMC based polymer is replaced with this hy hyaluronic acid uh, polymer where the, where the modification in hyaluronic acid has been uh, carried out to, to increase the lubricating capacity and now this product is uh, very well known in the market for treating the dry eye uh, syndrome. Next we are familiar with this product we can see that we can see the uh, various advertisement of the products, glycerine pocket packs. So you will be wonder that glycerine pocket packs contain the modified natural polymer. So yes, glycerine pocket pack contain a pululan based polymer. So it contains a modified pululan uh, polymer in it. Uh, now pululan is converted in this case into the film which is edible and therefore this glycerine is used as a mouth freshener. It is well known as a mouth freshener. Similarly here you have the another uh, pululan modification where uh, pululan modifier uh, is used, uh, converted into edible films, and it can be used uh, by smokers as a mouth freshener, or also you can make the chewing gums by using uh, this particular modified natural uh, polymers. Next, uh, uh, modified natural pululan, modified uh, pululans have the uh, are edible. So uh, uh, it is they, these particular uh, modified pululans are very very famous for their edible property in the packaging industry, especially the food packaging industry. These uh, films of the modified pululan are edible. So they are used for the packaging material for the food and the fruits. And another important aspect is 
these particular uh, modified uh, pululan films are very very uh, resistant to the oxygen permeation so and very very resistant to the oil permeation therefore they can prevent the they are found rather they are found useful uh, in preventing the oxidation associated with the food or oxidation associated with the food fruits so this particular uh, uh, pululan uh, modified films are very 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 popular in a food industry as a packaging material next now here is the example here is the application of the polymer in the nutraceutical fields now uh, uh, many of the a lot of the western world is focusing majorly on the nutraceutical they want our turmeric ashwagandha trifala and uh, black pepper in their diet as a nutraceutical so here is the opportunity and at the same time many people do not want to consume the capsules capsule shells which are made up of a gelatin because gelatin is, is from the origin from the animal origin so you can make a pululan uh, you can convert your uh, modified pululan into the capsule shells now these capsule shells are vegan they are vegetarian so therefore this vegetarian uh, pululan films can be used uh, to uh, 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 used to for the curcumin used for ashwagandha trifala and these products are also available especially these are available in the western market uh, in especially in the nutraceutical market but yes uh, as far as the indian uh, market is concerned we can make the use of this pululan based capsule shells for the drugs or even for the delivery of the phytochemicals also so here also uh, we have an opportunity of using the polymer based or pululan based uh, uh, capsule shells for delivery of the drug uh, or nutraceuticals then in a medical uh, from the years the polymers are known for their medical applications so we can use a natural polymers modifications in natural polymer to form a bioresorbable stains now after the success of the bioresorbable stains by using the natural polymers now scientists are started focusing upon the delivery of a drug where the stains are coated with the drug and uh, this kind of a stains are used for the uh, further uh, so that uh, targeted delivery can be achieved then polymer can be used for surgical sutures here are the surgical glues that are now surgeons are surgeons use for surgery then these are the bioresorbable screws used for fixation of the joints uh, in the surgery and all these are the uh, polymer based products natural polymer based products now here is some uh, somewhat off bit application it is not uh, related to medical field not related to pharma field uh, it is uh, uh, related to rather uh, uh, what we can say uh, for our repairing purposes repairing uh, walls so uh, here is the famous brand of asian paints which is nothing but a dam sheet which is nothing but a polymer based cement so in this case the natural polymer is modified in such a way that whenever it comes in contact with the it swells and it will help to repair the cracks that are present in the wall so if there is a seepage in the wall uh, and if you want to uh, repair if you want to correct the seepage in the wall and uh, then uh, it is it is used so it is a polymer based cement which can be used which contains a naturally based polymer then another product from the asian paints only smart care repair polymer which is also containing uh, uh, naturally uh, natu which contains a natural polymer and the modifications in a natural polymer uh, so that walls can be repaired houses can be repaired so that the damage due to seepage damage due to uh, rain can be uh, or moisture absorption can be uh, prevented now Uh, again off bit application of the polymer now here the scientist group of scientists have used the polymers as a filtering aid uh, for especially for the water purification industrial waste water purification scientists have developed filtering aid uh, by using the chitosan based polymer grafts so they have developed the chitosan based polymer grafts and they found out that this particular filtering is uh, very very well uh, in uh, well well in absorbing the metals like copper cobalt ferrous lead and some of the organic impurities at the same time it is also found to be thermo responsive so this particular system they further tested it for the industrial waste water and uh, there are very uh, good results that they obtain so you can make the polymer grafts and you can make them as a filtering aid also which is again uh, off bit application of the polymer again here 
the polymer polymeric material uh, modified modified polymeric material is used for the purification of the textile waste water now textile waste water contains lots of dyes uh, which contaminate our uh, uh, rivers and contaminate our sea ocean and uh, therefore it is of high concern we should have some kind of a filtering aid which is very well in uh, taking care of this dyes that are uh, uh, thrown from the textile industry so scientists have uh, made a polymer based nanofibers which uh, where the dye removal efficiency of these nanofibers were found to be 99% so it was found to be very very is a uh, effective in uh, textile waste water management and you can if you are if you are interested you can read this paper i have quoted the reference here so now after looking into what others are doing in their research lab i will just like to share some of the research work that we are uh, carrying out in our uh, lab by using the polymers we are majorly focusing upon the flavonoids and the curcuminoids in our laboratory because flavonoids and curcuminoids are known for their stability issues and known for their solubility issues though they have lots and lots of biological activities they have certain kind of issues like they undergo the metabolic degradation very fast metabolic degradation has been observed by the biological enzymes and because of which the bioavailability of these particular systems these particular chemicals are very very less then uh, because of their uh, oxidation prone the nature they are also found to be unstable then they have a very very less target specificity so we have developed a ph and a thermal sensitive uh, polymer which is definitely obtained from the natural polymer so we have modified a natural polymer chemically we have modified a natural polymer we make it ph uh, sensitive we make it a thermal sensitive and now uh, i will like to say that we are very very successful in uh, modification of this natural polymer and now we are thinking of to use this uh, modified natural polymer so, so to certain kind of so to these kind of uh, uh, poly uh, to, to 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 these kind of a phyto uh, chemicals for their successful delivery to the cancer drugs for this i will like to mention here we we are we have received the university of mumbai grant for this particular project uh, of uh, modifying the natural polymer and using it for the delivery or successful delivery and target specific delivery of the hydrophobic drugs we are also working on the quercetin metal complexes so we have the quercetin metal complexes developed in our laboratory and they have shown a very good anti cancer results uh, against the cancer cell lines but again here we have faced a lot of problem associated with the solubility they have a very high uh, uh, degree of uh, uh, lipid solubility and they have also have a very very uh, high stability issue so again here we have developed a natural polymer and our natural polymer uh, we are aiming at uh, for the development of uh, uh, modified polymer uh, which is uh, stable over a wider ph range and uh, our study that started and i again like to mention here our uh, modified po natural polymer which we have developed in our lab our own lab where we have developed developed a synthetic polymer by using a natural uh, moiety and the quercetin metal complexes that are also developed in our lab are found to be compatible uh, with each other and therefore we have uh, we are now targeting towards the development them developing them into the suitable uh, formulation systems now here uh, we have also carried out this project where we have developed in our laboratory a curcumin analog now we know curcumin uh, or uh, nutraceutical market very well well uh, very aware with uh, uh, curcumin as a a uh, very important uh, uh, product in a nutraceutical market and we, and many formulations many brands are available which are uh, selling the curcumin as a nutraceutical but there are uh, as far as we know uh, there are no brands there are no such marketed formulations for uh, treatment of cancer uh, by using the curcumin the products are available in a nutraceutical market as a nutraceutical but curcumin uh, is It's a very well-known for its anti-cancer property, but there are no products for. And also, curcumin has some of the uh, limitations, and therefore, we have synthesized the curcumin analog successfully in our uh, laboratory, and uh, we subjected it to the cancer cell lines. And here you can see, here you can see the our curcumin analog is found to be better than uh, curcumin itself, and the activity of our curcumin analog was uh, equal to the adriamycin. We have also carried out the uh, determination of the lambda max of our uh, product uh, determination of the molar mass we have determined the pka and determined the log p of the our curcumin analog and you can see here the log p of the curcumin analog is very high and this triggered us 
uh, the cancer uh, good results of the cancer good results of the um, uh, and uh, this particular physical aspects especially the log p value triggered us to take this formulation further uh, for uh, for uh, into the for developing it as a suitable delivery system by using the polymer so we have uh, carried out the stability studies we have also carried out the stability studies of curcumin and stability studies of our curcumin analog and our curcumin analog is found to be stable over the acidic range uh, but not over the alkaline range whereas our curcumin itself our curcumin known curcumin itself is not stable over the acidic range and also over the uh, base also over the uh, alkaline range so this again calls uh, uh, shown as the suitability for development of curcumin into the cancer product and therefore we have go further and we have developed uh, uh, we have carried out the compatibility studies of the curcumin by using this particular polymer and we have we are very very successful in the development of this gel for the topical formulation of our curcumin law then uh, again it is an another uh, important project that is going we have developed the polymer one i will not share the name of a polymer because the project is currently going on in our laboratory and the same curcumin analog which i uh, which we have developed in our laboratory now we are uh, in a process of uh, developing a nano fiber system for that particular uh, polymer that we have developed in our laboratory and the curcumin analog that we have developed in our laboratory so we have performed a drug polymer compatibility study and our uh, product was found to be compatible with the polymer and uh, with the polymer that we have developed in our laboratory so what we have to what i want to just to say that uh, the field is a very vast field and you can engineer the polymer as per your need and if you really explore this particular field it is a very good field to uh, study and it is a very very good field to give you a lots of challenges with, on which you can work upon and which you, uh, uh, with which you can develop your own specialties so this is my research uh, group ug and the pg students with uh, with whom i am working since the last two years on the polymer uh, modifications uh, so with this i will end my presentation uh, i will again like to thank the organizing committee for giving me the opportunity for this part of uh, this uh, for delivering the lecture in this fdp i will especially thank dr sanket for who was uh, uh, constantly behind me for uh, delivering the lecture in the fdp so okay thank you thank you very much So now, if there are any questions, uh, we would like to take the questions. Nitin Sarshil sir and Sanket sir, are there any questions? <clears throat> Thank you so much, sir, for this wonderful session. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we have a few questions over here. Uh, the first question. Uh, yes, sir. The first question is. There is echo, echo coming. Okay. Uh, uh, Continue. Okay. Thank you so much, sir, for this wonderful session. Thank you. Uh, so we have a few questions over here. Uh, the first question. Uh, sir, should I start with the question answer? Uh, yes, sir. The first question is... Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, the first question is by Naga Swami Venkatesh. Uh, so, we have a few questions over here. Uh, what uh, are the regulations for uh, natural polymer? Sir, should I start with the question answer? Uh, yes, sir. The first question is... I can't hear the question. What is uh, the question? What are the regulations for using natural polymer? No, no, there are no, as such there are no natural polymers, uh, uh, regulations for the natural polymers. Whatever you follow for the synthetic polymers like PEG and other, same kind of regulations you have to follow for the natural polymer. And uh, with, if, you, uh, if you show them the successful results, then they will, uh, they will not create any kind of hurdles in the accruing product. Uh, your product under development. Okay, sir. No, Thank no you so much. No special kind of regulations needed. Okay. Okay. Uh, sir, the second question is from Mr. Mahadev Gaikwad. Uh, 
uh, what are the natural sources of hyaluronic acid and how to analyze okay. natural sources of natural source of hyaluronic acid is from fungus but uh, uh, there are many companies who are involved in the polymer uh, extraction of a natural polymer so you can directly ask them for the for your polymer there is no need to extract the polymer from the fungus majority of the polymers that i have shown like i have shown the pululan and the hyaluronic acid are obtained from the fungal resources but there are companies who will help you to getting the polymer so uh, what was the next uh, question in this case i think there was also one another another question yeah it is how to analyze it okay how to analyze it so you have to analyze it if you are obtaining the polymer from uh, uh, directly from the company then definitely company will give you the certificate of analysis but uh, if you want to further go into the details like company will give you about the molar mass company will give you about the stability issues and the safety issues of the polymer uh, and uh, the another kind of uh, uh, things that are mentioned in the msds but if you want to really uh, find out the other characterizations like then you can go for the uh, nmr mass uh, to confirm whether the polymer that you have uh, is uh, obtained uh, correctly or not and you can also check ph and the thermal stability of the polymer before uh, modification okay sir thank you so much uh, our next question is from ms nazia uh, sir how will uh, how we can minimize the impurities associated with natural polymers okay uh again i will say if you are directly taking a sample from the industry there is no problem of impurity i think the person wants to ask about the modified uh, polymer where we have to control the impurities uh you can uh, subject your reaction mixture after a modification to the analysis like uh, i said you have to use a dialysis bag for a purification of a natural polymer so uh, for more purification of the polymer so what you can do is you can take a polymeric solution which is present in the dialysis bag and uh, polymeric solution which is present outside the dialysis bag that is in your container that is a beaker and that you can analyze for contents of the reacting mixture like for example if you are using ethylene oxide you can calculate the concentration of ethylene oxide in the solution which is present outside the dialysis bag and uh, by knowing this you can find out how much amount of the ethylene oxide is present as an impurity in the uh, in the polymer this is one approach to find out uh, how much is the impurity present in the modified polymer and another very simple approach is if you take a weight of the final product the product after it after lyophilization and uh, if you know the weight uh, definitely you will know the weight of the starting uh, material and if you compare both of them you will come to know how much uh, polymer has been modified and how much impurities might be present in it but this is a very very primary uh, uh, test primary determination to uh, know whether the impurities are present in or not but definitely you have to go for uh, uh, analyzing the solution which is present outside the dialysis bag for its content of the uh, reactants and from that you will come to know how much is the impurity present and how much is the polymer how much polymer has been reacted uh, as per as we are decided uh, to react it so with this uh, i think uh, i have asked the question i have answered the question that has been asked by a particular person okay uh, so uh, okay okay I, i i i also like to add you can also purify you can also check the purity by the gc analysis okay okay uh, sir our next question is by mr rijwan patan he is asking in case of coating with ph dependent polymer why we cannot use only non polar solvent in coating why there is a need of combination with polar solvent uh, see it is not a definite need that you have to use a non polar uh, it is a need of a polar solvent uh, as we are working on a natural polymer our natural polymers are solubilized in the water so therefore i said the system if you are working with a natural polymer it is better that we will develop our system in the water that is a polar solvent but there are certain reports available where the polymer has been first uh, the polymeric solution has been first made with a toluene like non very highly non polar solvent like toluene and once you have uh, for initial period of a time uh, when you carry out the reaction with a uh, toluene then you can uh, switch over solvent 
which is found to be compatible with the toluene uh, or you can directly add the solvent into the reaction mixture which is compatible with the uh, uh, toluene uh, uh, so this is how uh, it is not a definite need that you have to always go for uh, polar uh, solvents but as far as the greener chemistry approach the environmental approach of the chemistry reactions are concerned yes you have to go for water as a polymer but if there are any kind of a compatibility issues like your polymer will uh, most of the natural polymers are found to be uh, getting separated out when they are uh, added into the non polar solvents so therefore uh, you, you have to stick you have to restrict yourself to the use of a polar solvent but if there is a need and for a polymer is compatible you can go for a non polar solvent it is not like you cannot go for non polar solvent but but we go generally for a polar solvents because we are relying upon the natural polymers <clears throat> okay in in next question <clears throat> Thank you, Kunal sir, for a wonderful session. Thank you, thank you very much, madam. Uh, that's the end. Should I end my should I end my presentation? Yes, 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 Kunal sir, no problem. Yeah, bye bye. Yes, bye bye. Let's continue further with session. <clears throat> It is my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Abdul Faruk. Sir is having more than 22 years of teaching and research experience. Currently, he is serving as professor and head of the pharmaceutical sciences department at HNB Garhwal University at Uttaranchal. At undergraduate level, he received scholarship from UGC and junior research fellowship. Till date, Dr. Farooq has published around 20 research articles in peer-reviewed international journals and around 25 in papers in esteemed national journals. Around 30 MPharm and 8 PhD students are guided by him. He has presented several papers in international conference. He received major project grants from AICT. He has also authored one book. it is my pleasure to have you as a speaker sir i welcome you sir on behalf of organizing committee and i request you to start your presentation thank you sir thank you all for the nice words to me good morning all of you and i am thankful to dr l h hiranandani college of pharmacy and rahul dharkar college of pharmacy and research institute who in collaboration with apti and indian pharmaceutical association has organized e faculty development forum with the theme pharmaceutical product development challenges and opportunity and the entire organizing team for holding e faculty development forum especially dr sanket whose personal invitation i am here with you and i am giving and uh, and giving me an opportunity to speak on the topic biostatistics application in pharmaceutical research thank thanks for all the entire organizing team and i hope the program at this time of crisis where any type of physical meeting uh, um, is not possible and abundant will be of great success this is a good opportunity me to interact with the participants faculty from all part of india and we see this as a great india and one india in this presentation we'll talk you about some basic concepts regarding the statistics we'll uh, discuss about some basic uh, concepts and some basic ideas regarding the uh, the terms used in the statistics jaisa ki uh, you know the application of the statistics are concerned the statistic is a scientific study of the numerical data based on the nature natural phenomena it is the it is also science of collecting organizing interpreting and reporting data so far as the pharmaceutical statistics are 
concerned it addresses the issues of the design of experiment to the analysis of the drug trials to issue of the commercialization of the medicine to evaluate the activity of the drug to explore whether the changes produced by the drug are due to the action of the drug or by chance to compare the action of the two or more different drugs or different doses form or different doses of the same drug to find an association between the disease and the risk factor such as coronary artery disease and smoking design and analysis of the clinical trials in the medicines here i am to say that some these are the some applications in the related to our concern related to our pharmacy related to our experimentation or research experimentation but hum aapko batana chahte hain there is various various application of the statistics in the uh, uh, various application of the statistics ab jab hum plan karte hain kisi bhi study ko then we'll basically consider several points into our consideration aur jab usme sabse pehle we start with our objectives we develop the background and relevance define define the specific data that will satisfy our objectives and verify that our method that uh, our method will provide this data or not develop clearly specified some alter, some uh, hypothesis plan data recording ensure that your sample size will satisfy our objectives anticipate what statistical analysis with yield results that will satisfy your objectives plan test for sampling bias plan the bridge from the results to the conclusion anticipate the form in which your conclusion will be expressed so ye sare points jitne bhi humne aapko bataye hain these are the these are the planning study aur is study ko jo plan karte hain ki ye sare ke sare points jo hai na step by step you will have to see then we have four steps kisi bhi data ko kisi bhi experimentation kisi bhi research work ko jab hum karte hain to sabse pehle hum data ko ikattha karte hain we collect the data then we describe the data then we analyze the data and on the basis of analysis we conclude for the data so data collection is very important data collection ke baad mein हम उसके बाद में उसको डिस्क्राइब करते हैं कैसे हम उसको रिप्रेजेंट करते हैं रिप्रेजेंट करने के बाद में हम पूरे का पूरे डाटा को किस किस कैटेगरी के फॉर्मूले से उसको एनालाइज करते हैं कौन से टेस्ट लगाते हैं उसके बाद में हम उसको कंक्लूड करते हैं तो ये फोर स्टेप्स होते हैं किसी भी रिसर्च फाइंडिंग्स को कंक्लूड करने में अब अगर हम डाटा को कोई भी स्टेटिकल डाटा को अगर हम आप ऐसे समझ लीजिए अगर हम कोई टेबुलर रिप्रेजेंटेशन में अगर हम उसको रिप्रेजेंट करते हैं तो उसको कहते हैं फ्रीक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इसको ऐसे डिफाइन कर सकते हैं इट में भी डिफाइंड एज ए टेबुलर रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ द स्टेटिस्टिकल डाटा यूजली इन असेंडिंग ऑर्डर रिलेटेड टू मेजरेबल करेक्टरिस्टिक अकॉर्डिंग टू इंडिविजुअल ग्रुप्स और ग्रुप ऑफ वैल्यूज यानी कि डाटा हमको मिला डाटा मिलने के बाद में उसको हम टेबुलर फॉर्म में रिप्रेजेंट करते हैं तो उस रिप्रेजेंटेशन को हम फ्रीक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन कहते हैं अब फ्रीक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन दो तरीके की फ्रीक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन होती है नंबर वन इज द ऑब्जर्व फ्रीक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन और दूसरी जो फ्रीक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन होती है वो थ्योरिटिकल फ्रिक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन होती है तो ऑब्जर्व फ्रिक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन में आप कोई भी एक्सपेरिमेंट को आप परफॉर्म करते हैं और उसके बेसिस पे आपको डाटा कलेक्ट करना पड़ता है यानी कि कोई एक्सपेरिमेंट आपने किया एक्सपेरिमेंट करने के बाद में जो भी आउटपुट आएगा उसका डाटा आपने कलेक्ट किया और उसके बाद में उसको टेबल फॉर्म में रिप्रेजेंट किया वो आपका ऑब्जर्व फ्रिक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन है दूसरा तरीका ये होता है कि आपने कोई एक्सपेरिमेंट एक्सपेरिमेंट नहीं किया आपने किस मैथमेटिकल एग्जाम्शन के बेस पे जो है ना डाटा को जनरेट किया यानी कि अगर मान लो अगर हम ऐसे कहें कि एक आ, 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 किसी कॉइन को अगर आपने टॉस किया तो या तो हेड आएगा या टेल आएगा 
तो प्रॉबेबिलिटी दोनों रहती है तो अगर इस तरह की कोई प्रॉब्लम्स अगर आती है आपके सामने तो आप ये समझ लीजिए कि ये थ्योटिकल फ्रिक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन है हम इसको देखते हैं ऑब्जर्व फ्रिक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल द एम्पेरिकल फ्रिक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इट इज कंस्ट्रक्टेड बाई एक्चुअली परफॉर्मिंग द एक्सपेरिमेंट एंड नथिंग ड्रॉन द आउटकम्स एंड नोटिंग डाउन द आउटकम द स्टेटिस्टिक आर कलेक्टेड फिजिकली एंड दे फॉर्म द सेट ऑफ Uh, observed frequency, for example, like this. Suppose the marks of the student. Uh, 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 these are the number of the students. The marks obtained by the uh, student uh, that is zero by the three students five, eleven, then ten marks, nineteen. These are the observed values. Now here you see, you see, the, it is also called the frequency. Frequency are determined according to some. mathematical theories and these are known as the expected frequency distribution because the results are not determined by the physical efforts but can be simply expressed by after applying some mathematical technique based on some assumptions probability frequency this is it is also called the probability frequency distribution ag ek example hai iska aap dekh lijiye let us suppose that four coins are tossed 256 times the theoretical frequency distribution is determined as the number of हर आने की जो पॉसिबिलिटीज है इट इज वन बाई सिक्सटीन फॉर वन ट्रायल नंबर ऑफ हेड वन आने की जो पॉसिबिलिटीज है फोर बाई सिक्सटीन दो बार हेड आएगा उसकी पॉसिबिलिटी सिक्स बाई सिक्सटीन लाइक दिस तो टोटल आपने ये जो डाटा जनरेट किया ये प्रॉबिलिटी जो आपने ये जो फ्रिक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन आपने जनरेट किया ये बेस्ड ऑफ इट इज बेस्ड ऑन सम मैथमेटिकल एग्जामेशन है नाउ द थ्रिटिकल फ्रिक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इज ऑफ थ्री टाइप्स बायोनोमल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन पॉइजन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन हम बायोनोमल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन और पॉइजन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन से स्टार्ट करने से पहले हम आपको ये बताना चाहेंगे कि डाटा जो है ना दो तरीके के होते हैं एक डिस्क्रीट डाटा होता है एक होता है कंटिन्यूस डाटा डिस्क्रीट डाटा का मतलब ये होता है कि दूज वैल्यू इज ऑप्टेन बाई काउंटिंग और कंटिन्यूस डाटा का मतलब ये होता है कि द नोमरिकल डाटा रिजल्ट फ्रॉम इनफाइनाइटली many possible values that correspond to some continuous scale and covers a range of values without gaps uh, interruption or jumps or you can say whose values is obtained by measuring isko measure kar sakte hain agar koi continuous data hai aur binomial or poisson distribution ka jo data hai wo discrete data hote hain discrete data ka matlab ye hota hai ki it is obtained by counting matlab ki finite they are they are their numbers are finite you can able to count or continuous data basically hote hain jisme ki aap count nahi kar sakte aap measure karte hain jaise aapne height measure karna hai agar maan lo kisi ka weight measure karna hai to usko usko count nahi kar sakte ki measure kar sakte hain to ye binomial distribution data aur poisson distribution data केवल डिस्क्रीट डाटा को कलेक्ट करने के लिए किया जाता है अब उसमें आप ऐसा समझने की कोशिश करिए कि कोई एक्सपेरिमेंट है जिसमें कि रिजल्ट्स को हाँ या ना आने की संभावना बराबर बराबर की है द पॉसिबिलिटीज ऑफ यस एंड पॉसिबिलिटीज ऑफ नो और यू कैन से द पॉसिबिलिटीज ऑफ सक्सेस एंड पॉसिबिलिटीज ऑफ फेलियर आर इक्वल उस केस में आपका बायोनोमल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन लगेगा आप देख लीजिए बायोनोमल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन की कंडीशंस क्या हैं एन इज द नंबर ऑफ टाइम द एक्सपेरिमेंट इज परफॉर्म मतलब नंबर ऑफ टाइम का मतलब ये हो गया कि नंबर ऑफ ट्रायल्स द एक्सपेरिमेंट को परफॉर्म किया जाता है मस्ट बी फाइनाइट एंड प्री डिटरमाइंड मस्ट बी फाइनाइट मतलब कि वो काउंटेबल होने चाहिए नंबर टू द टर्म बायोनोमियल मीन्स द टू नेम्स द आउटकम ऑफ द एक्सपेरिमेंट इज डिटरमाइंड एज ए सक्सेस एंड द फेलियर the sum of these two categories is always one if the p is the possibilities of success then probability of the failure is q the so, so that is a, the sum of p and q is equal to 1 to iska matlab ye hai ki p ki agar possibilities hogi to failure ki jo possibilities hogi wo q is equal to 1 minus p the possibilities of success and the possibilities and probability of the failure is always remain the same and the fixed for all trials ye iski condition hai ki pehle pehli condition ye hai ki data discrete hona chahiye dusri condition hai ki number of trials finite hone chahiye number 
the success and the um, uh, success and the failure the sum of the success and failure must be equal to 1 the outcome of the trials are independent of each other do experiment agar aap kar rahe hain to dono experiment ke jo outcome hai jo results hain wo independent hone chahiye these are the binomial distribution aap dekh lijiye agar ek ek ek, ek, pro, ek problem hai this is the एक क्वेश्चन है अगर आप इसको देखिए इसके बाद में आपको पता चल जाएगा कि बायनोमल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन लगेगा इसमें या कोई और दूस, और दूसरा स्टैटिस्टिक लगेगा पहला है कि फाइंड द प्रोबेबिलिटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ ए नंबर ऑफ हेड इन फोर प्रोसेस ऑफ पॉइंट अब अगर आप देखिए यहाँ पर कि प्रॉबेबिलिटी ऑफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन नंबर ऑफ हैड अगर हैड है तो हैड आने के समय एक पॉइंट में दो ही होती हैं ठीक है ना या हैड आएगा या टेल आएगा तो अगर हैड आ रहा है तो तो सक्सेस 50 परसेंट है टेल आ रहा है तो फेलियर 50 परसेंट है तो इसमें प्रोबेबिलिटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन लगेगा कैसे फॉर्मूला लगना है क्या लगना है ये हमें अभी डिस्कस नहीं कर रहे हैं इसमें लेकिन इसमें प्रॉब्लम को समझो और उसके बाद में इसमें ये देखने की कोशिश करो कि कौन सा स्टैटिस्टिक इसमें लगनी है जैसे सपोज सेकेंड क्वेश्चन है थ्री फेयर पॉइंट आर पॉस्ट थ्री थाउजेंड टाइम्स फाइन द फ्रिक्वेंसी ऑफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ हेड हेड्स एंड टेल एंड कैलकुलेट द स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन ऑफ द ऑफ द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन अब आपने यहाँ पे देख लिया कि थ्री हंड्रेड थ्री थाउजेंड टाइम्स तो नंबर ऑफ ट्रायल इज फाइनाइट इन नंबर और पॉइंट्स में अगर कोई चीज आप निकाल रहे हैं तो उसमें किसी आउटकम आने की समझो प्रॉबिलिटी है पॉसिबिलिटीज है वो फिफ्टी परसेंट है तो इन दोनों केसेस में आपको बायनोमल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन लगेगा ये बायनोमल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन का एक कोफिशेंट है जो आपने बुक के पीछे आपने शायद देखा होगा जो इस तरीके के होते हैं और उसके अंदर फार्मूला के अंदर में सीधे फिट किए जाते हैं और उसके बाद में रिजल्ट को कैलकुलेट किया जाता है अभी हम फार्मूला नहीं डिस्कस कर रहे हैं हम केवल ये इतने डिस्कस कर रहे हैं कि कौन कौन से किस किस तरीके के प्रॉब्लम्स में कौन कौन से स्टैटिस्टिक लग रही है और कैसे लग रही है फार्मूला की बात करेंगे तो हम बाद में हम इसके बारे में डिस्कस कर सकते हैं पॉइजन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन पहला केस था कि नंबर ऑफ सक्सेस एंड नंबर ऑफ फेलियर वो बराबर बराबर के होते हैं पॉइजन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन के अंदर में नंबर ऑफ सक्सेस बहुत रेयर होते हैं नंबर ऑफ फेरियर के चांसेस बहुत ज्यादा होते हैं ये ऐसी कंडीशन है और दूसरा है कि एंड की जो वैल्यू होगी नंबर ऑफ नंबर ऑफ ट्रायल्स वो जो वैल्यू होगी वो फाइनाइट वो फाइनाइट होगी सॉरी जो नंबर ऑफ ट्रायल्स वो इनफाइनाइट होगी मतलब हम प्रयास तो बहुत ज्यादा करेंगे ट्रायल्स भी बहुत ज्यादा करेंगे लेकिन किसी भी सक्सेस को पाने के लिए उसमें फेलियर ज़्यादा होता है सक्सेस कम होता है तो ये उसकी उसकी कंडीशंस हैं इट इज इट इज़ द लिमिटिंग फॉर्म द बाइनोमल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन वेयर वेयर एंड अप्रोच टू फाइनाइट एंड द नंबर नंबर ऑफ ट्रायल्स इज इनफाइनेटली लार्ज एंड द प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ सक्सेस इज वेरी स्मॉल और उसके एग्जाम्शन क्या हैं assumptions and the happening or not happening of any one does not affect the happening or not happening of other iska matlab hai ki do trials different different times pe agar aap karte hain they are independent to each other the probability of success for a short period of time or a or a small region is directly proportional to the time and the magnitude of the interval so these are the, um, the second condition the the third condition the prop the the probability of happening is more than one event in a very small interval is almost negligible ye third is ka for assumptions hai ab aap dekh lijiye ki assuming that a question hai teen question humne put up kiye hain yahan par isko samajhne ki koshish karte hain assuming that on the an average 5% of the output of a factory making certain parts is defective and 200 units are in a package what is the probability that most four defective parts will be found in a packet matlab pure factory ke lot ke andar mein jo hai na wo 5% output jo hai na usme defective hai aur usme 200 units back package banaye aur 200 mein aapne aapne uthaye aur uske baad ye dekha ki jo aapke jo baggage ke andar mein kitne isme mein defective hai kitne part isme defective hai to iska matlab ye ho gaya कि नंबर ऑफ ट्रायल्स आप कितने भी करते जाइए तो डिफेक्टिव 
आइटम्स बनाने के लिए आपको जो है ना इतने यूनिट दिए गए हैं तो आप ये समझ सकते हैं कि पॉसिबिलिटीज ऑफ फेलियर उसमें बहुत ज्यादा है पॉसिबिलिटीज ऑफ सक्सेस क्या है सक्सेस यहाँ पर क्या गया कि कोई डिफेक्टिव पार्ट मिल गया ये सक्सेस है यहाँ पर लेकिन फेलियर होने के चांसेस है ना ना के बराबर है तो इसमें पॉइजन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन लगेगा द पॉसिबिलिटीज ऑफ द प्रॉबिलिटी डिफेक्टिव इन बल्क केस फोर परसेंट फाइन द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ नॉट मोर देन टू डिफेक्टिव आई डिफेक्टिव इन ए सैम्पल ऑफ टेन तो इस केस में भी वही है कि अगर किसी भी सिस्टम के अंदर में आप देख लीजिए फोर परसेंट डिफेक्टिव है तो अगर आपने किसी सैम्पल में दो आइटम अगर उठाया कुछ आइटम उठाया सॉरी दस आइटम में से दो आइटम ये मान के चलें कि मिलेगा नहीं मिल सकता है पॉसिबिलिटीज़ है मिल भी सकता है लेकिन पॉसिबिलिटीज़ कम है आपने देखा होगा बहुत सारे कंपनी ऐसे करती हैं कि चाय के बैगेज में वो सोने का सिक्का डाल देती हैं और ये कहते हैं कि अगर आप ये चाय की पत्ती खरीदेंगे ये आप खरीदेंगे तो उसके अंदर में सोने का सिक्का मिलेगा लेकिन पॉसिबिलिटीज़ क्या हैं बहुत कम है वो उस तरीके के जो प्रॉब्लम्स हैं आप उसको पॉइजन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन के हिसाब से आप एस्टिमेट कर सकते हैं उसकी वैल्यू अब जैसे मान लीजिए किसी ने ये कहा कि हम चार बार समुद्र में डूब के मोती ढूंढ के लेके आएंगे तो मोती है समुद्र में पर्स है समुद्र के अंदर में लेकिन फैक्ट ये है कि अगर आप नंबर ऑफ ट्रायल्स को अगर एक एक इनफाइनाइट भी कर सकते हैं इनफाइनाइट भी कर दें फिर भी पॉसिबिलिटीज ऑफ द सक्सेस इज वेरी रेयर तो अगर इस तरीके की कोई पॉसिबिलिटीज हैं तो आप पॉइजन ये जो वैल्यूज हैं वो ई टू द पावर माइनस एम ये इसकी जो पॉइजन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन की जो कंप्यूटिंग पॉसिबिलिटीज हैं प्रॉबिलिटीज हैं उसको करने के लिए हम फॉर्मे में फिट करते हैं फिर तो आपको वैल्यूज एस्टिमेट करते हैं हम ना थर्ड इज द नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन के अंदर में सबसे ज्यादा जो पार्ट वो है कि नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन में इट इज इट इज इट इज लुक्ड अपॉन एज ए लिमिटिंग फॉर्म ऑफ द बायोनोमल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन अंडर सर्टन कंडीशन ऑफ कंडीशन क्या है कि नंबर ऑफ ट्रायल इज इनफाइनाइटली लार्ज नंबर वन और दूसरा है नाइदर पी और नॉर क्यू पी इज द सक्सेस एंड क्यू इज द फेलियर नाइदर पी और क्यू इज स्मॉल नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन को अगर आप ऐसे समझ लीजिए कि पहले आपने बायोडोम डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन देखा था दूसरा दूसरा में देखा था आपने पॉइजन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन तो बायोनोमल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन में आपने देखा था कि पॉसिबिलिटीज ऑफ सक्सेस एंड पॉसिबिलिटीज ऑफ फेलियर आर इक्वली आर इक्वल पॉइजन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन में आपने देखा था सक्सेस कम है फेलियर ज्यादा है लेकिन इस केस में सक्सेस और फेलियर दोनों जो है ना कि पॉसिबिलिटीज बराबर की तो नहीं होती हैं लेकिन पॉसिबिलिटी ज्यादा रहती हैं नाइदर पी और क्यू इज स्मॉल ना पी मतलब फेलियर भी कम नहीं है और सक्सेस भी कम नहीं है तो दूसरा है कि इसका नंबर ऑफ ट्रायल्स पहले दो में फाइनाइट थे इसमें इनफाइनाइट है तो ये तीन पॉइंट्स हम आपने आपको बताया नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन के बारे में और दूसरा ये है कि पहले बायोनोमियल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन और पॉइजन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन में जब डाटा डिस्क्रीट होगा तब अप्लाई होगा इस केस में जब डाटा कंटिन्यूस होगा तब ये अप्लाई होगा इसके जो वैल्यूज हम निकालते हैं जो वैल्यूज एस्टिमेट करते हैं वो जेड के फॉर्म में हम निकालते हैं तो इसमें देख लीजिए इफ द सैम्पल इज रेंडमली ड्रॉन फ्रॉम ए पॉपुलेशन then with the increase in the size of the sample the mean of the sample tends to normal distribution this property is known as central limit theorem agar hum frequency distribution agar ka curve agar hum draw kare to iska curve jo hai na is tarike ka draw hota hai ye ye iska ye iska characteristic feature hai normal distribution ka to तो इसे कहते हैं जो बीच वाला पोर्शन होता है इसे कहते हैं सेंट्रल लिमिट थ्योरम इफ द नंबर ऑफ इफ अंडर सम एक्सेप्शनल सर्कमास्टेंसेस द एजम्पशंस ऑफ द नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन आर नॉट सेटिस्फाइड द आउटकम ऑफ द नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन रिमेन सेटिस्फैक्ट्री एंड डिपेंडेबल कंडीशंस कौन कौन से हैं उसमें कंडीशन फॉर द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन टू बी नॉर्मल नंबर 
the factor affecting the events in the problem must remain independent of each other independent ka rehna important hai number 2 the forces must act in such a manner that the deviation above and below the population means balance each other third jo hai na uska condition hai these casual forces must be very large in number and almost equal in weights the forces as far as possible must be uniform over the universe from which the samples are drawn the properties of the normal curve the shape of the normal curve depend mainly on the values of the mean and standard deviation it is the limiting case of the binomial distribution where none of the p r q is small it is a it is a limiting curve of the poisson distribution where the where its mean that is m is sufficiently large the tails of the normal curve is on the both side of uh, never meets the horizontal axis the mean of the universe lies at the mode the normal curve is unimodal that is it has only one mode since the curve is symmetrical about the highest ordinate therefore the mean is equal to mode is equal to median ye yes, iska is the characteristic mean mean is equal to mode is equal to medium tinon barabar hote hain center the mean ordinate that is the highest ordinate corresponding to the mean median or mode divide the data into exactly two parts the frequency scattered on either side of the ordinate are equal in number so these are the properties of the normal curve इसमें जो वैल्यूज हम निकालते हैं वो Z के वैल्यू निकालते हैं तो आप इस तरह के प्रॉब्लम को देख लीजिए कि इसमें जो है कौन से स्टैटिस्टिक लगेगी द मीन ऑफ द मीन वेट ऑफ 500 मेल स्टूडेंट एट ए सर्टेन कॉलेज इज 65.6 फाइव पॉइंट एंड द स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन इज 10 के जी एजूमिंग दैट द वेट आर नॉर्मली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड फाइंड हाउ मैनी स्टूडेंट्स वेट मोर देन 75.5 kg between this 55.5 and 75.5 kg is tarah ke problems ko jo hai na hum normal distribution data se hum jo calculate karte hain that ki value nikalte hain iske isme ab dekh lijiye iske andar mein second problem ko is tarah if the level of the education education among the adults in a certain region is normally distributed with the mean 8 and standard deviation 5 what is the probability that in a sample of 100 adults uh, you will find an an uh, you will find an average of level of education between 10 and 14 year more than 14 year this type of problem you you solve with the help of uh, estimating uh, estimating the value of z like this ye kuch ki values hain jo ki normally data आपको बुक्स के पीछे कुछ अपेंडिक्स भी होते हैं उसके अंदर में दिए होते हैं अब दो चीज़ें हैं इसके अंदर में जो तीन चीज़ें हमने बताई आपको बायोनॉमल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन पॉइजन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन उसमें जो वैल्यूज हैं वो एस्टीमेट की जाती हैं अब यहाँ पर अगर कुछ डाटा ऐसे भी होते हैं जिसमें दो पैरल वैल्यूज दिए हुए हैं उसमें ये देखना है कि दो डाटा सेम है या डिफरेंट है अगर सेम है तो कितना सेम है डिफरेंट है तो कितना डिफरेंट है तो अगर दो दो डाटा को कंपैरिजन करने के लिए अगर कोई भी आपको स्टेटिस्टिकल एनालिसिस करनी पड़ती है तो उसमें वैल्यूज एस्टिमेट नहीं करना है आपको
حلو हेलो इज इट ऑडिबल हेलो हाँ हेलो अर्षद सर आई थिंक सर हैड लेव बिकॉज ऑफ द सम टेक्निकल इश्यू ओके ओके सर वी विल वेट फॉर सर संकेत सर आर यू देयर हाँ हाँ एडमिटेड सर नो नो आई थिंक सर है नॉट टू वे कैम राइट नाउ नो ही जॉइन नाउ ही जॉइन आई एडमिटेड नो नो ओके ओके सर फारुक सर फारुक ओ फारुक सर ओके या जस्ट वी वेट फॉर सम टाइम यस वेलकम सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर सो देर वॉज अ टेक्निकल प्रॉब्लम फ्रॉम सर साइड सो वी आर वेटिंग फॉर सर Yes, yes, yes. Some uh, technical problem is there from sir side. Okay, okay. Ah. Uh, ah, Faruk sir, fa, no, no, fa, fa, Faruk sir, gay, we nikal ke shay. Kuch kya sa hua hai? Ha, ma, ha, bol do, bol do. Fir se, fir se join karne ke liye bolo, jaldi hai usko. Ha, unko jaldi ho. हेलो हेलो हर्षल सर हाँ बोला बोला सर सर इज कमिंग देर वॉज अ टेक्निकल प्रॉब्लम फ्रॉम सर साइड सो सर विल कम एनी मोमेंट ओके सॉरी फॉर इनकन्वीनियंस ऑल आप निकल रहे हो वही पासवर्ड डाल के फिर से भी ज्वाइन कर लीजिए यस सर यस वो मीटिंग आई डी डाल आ रहे ना हाँ ठीक है ऑल व्यूवर्स हेर बाई इन्फॉर्म दैट सर इज कमिंग विद इन अ टू मे देर वॉज अ टेक्निकल डिस्कनेक्शन इन बिटवीन द सर एंड अवर कनेक्शन अरे मैं क्या बोल रहा हूँ सर को बोलना ये करने के लिए नहीं तो क्या करने के लिए पीपीटी भेजने के लिए नहीं नहीं पीपीटी नहीं ये करने के लिए क्या बोलते हो कनेक्शन उनका लूज हो गया था क्या पूछा तूने वो पता नहीं कैसे एग्जिट करते हैं लोगों को कहाँ पे मीटिंग रिजॉइन करो 
हाँ तो उनको नहीं तो मैसेज भेजो उनका मीटिंग का फिर फिर से मैं उसी 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 लिंक को फिर से भेजता हूँ जो हाँ उनको फिर से भेजा अभी अभी भेजा था ना मैंने जो नया वाला लिंक वो भेजता हूँ So now it's visible. Good. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, 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 sir. Uh, you, you please share the screen. Okay, sir. हम हाइपोथेसिस टेस्टिंग की बात कर रहे थे हाइपोथेसिस टेस्टिंग की बात कर रहे थे तो पहले जनरेट करना पड़ता है हाइपोथेसिस उसके बाद में उसको टेस्ट किया जाता है डिफरेंट डिफरेंट टेस्ट लगा के ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ द टेस्ट वी एक्सेप्ट Uh, our limits and we do not accept our limits that depends upon the type of the experiment we have uh, designed so then sabse pehle we uh, the hypothesis is generated then formulate an analysis plan then an analyze the sample data and interpret the result these are the basically four steps on the basis of analysis we interpret the results so this is this ko 
अपने रिजल्ट्स को इन्फर करने के लिए स्टेटिस्टिकल इन्फ्रेंस देने के लिए हम हाइपोथेसिस टेस्टिंग करते हैं उसमें नल हाइपोथेसिस है दूसरा अल्टरनेटिव हाइपोथेसिस है अल्टरनेटिव हाइपोथेसिस बेसिकली अगर आपके दो डाटा सिमिलर अगर हैं तो नल हाइपोथेसिस अगर दो डाटा सिमिलर नहीं है या अलग हैं कुछ चेंजेस हैं उसके बीच में या डिसिमिलर हैं तो उसको अल्टरनेटिव हाइपोथेसिस दी जाती है आप हाइपोथेसिस टेस्ट कर कैसे करते हैं तो सबसे पहले किसी सबसे पहले आप देख लीजिए कुछ स्टेप्स को हम डिफाइन करते हैं फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल सेट द हाइपोथेसिस सेकंड इज टू सेट द सेटअप ए सुटेबल सिग्निफिकेंस लेवल अब आपको ये देखना है कि अगर मान लीजिए आपका रिजल्ट सेम है तो कितने परसेंट तक आप उसको टॉलरेट कर सकते हैं कितने परसेंट तक आप उसको कंसिडर कर सकते हैं या कितने परसेंट तक आप उसको एकोमोडेट कर सकते हैं फाइव परसेंट लेवल पे वन परसेंट लेवल पे तो वो डिपेंड करता है सेकेंड ये है कि अगर आपका आप उसको आप उसको जो है ना किस तरीके से जो उसको एनालाइज करना चाहते हैं उसको टी टेस्ट लगाना चाहते हैं या एफ टेस्ट लगाएंगे का स्क्वायर टेस्ट लगाते हैं ये डिपेंड करता है किस तरह का आपका डाटा है डाटा के हिसाब से आपको वो टेस्ट लगाना होता है सेकंड फोर्थ इज द कंपोटेशन एंड देन मेकिंग द डिसीजन दीज आर द प्रोसीजर फॉर द हाइपोथिस टेस्टिंग अब सबसे पहले टेस्ट ऑफ द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ द स्मॉल सैंपल्स जब दो आपके पास में वैल्यूज हैं और अगर वो सैंपल अगर आपके साइज बहुत छोटा मतलब छोटा है स्मॉल सैंपल्स हैं तो उस केस में आपको जो टेस्ट लगाना होगा वो स्टूडेंट टी टेस्ट टी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन लगाना टी टेस्ट लगाना पड़ेगा तो टी टेस्ट की कंडीशन क्या है टी टेस्ट डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन इज यूज वेन दैंपल साइज थर्टी और लेस एंड पॉपुलेशन स्टेंट डेविएशन डेविएशन इज अनोन एक हमारे पास में इसके साथ में अगर हम कंपेयर कर रहे हैं जेड टेस्ट यानी कि नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन के जो हम जेड की वैल्यूज निकालते हैं और टी की वैल्यू निकालते हैं तो जेड की जो वैल्यूज हम निकालते हैं उस, उस वो तब निकालते हैं जब पॉपुलेशन साइज हमारा बहुत ज़्यादा होता है और टी टेस्ट तब लगाते हैं जब सैम्पल साइज हमारा कम होता है तो अगर हम उसमें सिग्मा को अगर हम कंसिडर करते हैं सिग्मा को सिग्मा मतलब पॉपुलेशन स्टैंडर्ड एविएशन तो वो बहुत ज़्यादा होता है उसकी जो वैल्यूज होती हैं वो बहुत ज़्यादा होती हैं और इस केस में हमको जो सैम्पल जो साइज होता है उस एस जो सैम्पल स्टैंडर्ड एविएशन होता है वो बहुत कम होता है तो इसमें कन्वीनियंस भी होती है और दूसरा है कि हमारा बहुत सारे जो रिजर्स रिसर्च में जो इस्तेमाल होने वाले जो यूज़ होने वाले कंपोनेंट्स हैं वो हमारे पास वो कुछ हम हम इसको सेव कर सकते हैं इकोनॉमिकल भी है अगर कभी कभी ऐसा बार ऐसे बार होता है कि डाटा जो है ना जनरेट हम करते हैं दूसरे तरीके से तो वो इकोनॉमिकल नहीं होता है बट हियर इन दिस केस दी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन वैन यू अप्लाई इट इज़ इकोनॉमिकल इन टू दैट इज टू बी टेकन इन टू कंसिडरेशन ऑल्सो अब इसके अंदर में तीन पॉइंट्स हैं टू टेस्ट ऑफ सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ द मीन ऑफ द रैंडम सैंपल दूसरा है टेस्ट ऑफ डिफरेंस बिटवीन द मीन ऑफ टू सैंपल्स दैट इज इंडिपेंडेंट सैंपल्स और थर्ड है इसमें की टेस्ट में टेस्टिंग डिफरेंस बिटवीन द मीन्स मीन्स ऑफ टू सैंपल दैट इज डिपेंडेंट सैंपल्स और मैस्ड पेयर ऑब्जर्वेशन यानी कि तीन तरीके के की टेस्ट की डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन होते हैं तो अगर आपको किसी भी सैंपल का अगर आपको ये देखना है कि अगर एक मीन आपको स्टैंडर्ड दिया हुआ है और आपने रैंडम सैंपलिंग कर ली लेकिन उसका कंडीशन क्या है कि साइज 30 से कम होना चाहिए तो आप ये देख के बता सकते हैं कि इसमें ये टी टेस्ट लगेगा आप जैसे देख लीजिए द मैन्युफैक्चर ऑफ ए सर्टन मेक ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक बल्ब क्लेम दैट दैट हिज बल्ब हैव द मीन लाइफ ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव मंथ्स विद स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन ऑफ द फाइव मंथ्स रैंडम सैंपल ऑफ सिक्स सच बल्ब गिव द फॉलोइंग वैल्यूज तो लाइफ ऑफ लाइफ इन मंथ दीज आर द रैंडम सैंपल्स ऑफ द फाइव बल्ब कलेक्टेड इन द इन द पॉपुलेशन तो मीन वैल्यूज ट्वेंटी फाइव दी हुई है और मीन वैल्यू से कितना दूर जा रहा है आपको ये देखना पड़ेगा और वन परसेंट सिग्निफिकेंस लेवल क्या है तो कहने का मतलब मेरा ये है कि इस तरीके की प्रॉब्लम में इसका फॉर्मूला अलग है और जो दूसरे तरीके का जो दूसरी कंडीशन है उसका फॉर्मूला अलग है 
तो आप ये देखिए दूसरे वाला केस देखिए दूसरा क्वेश्चन देखिए इसी इसी टाइटल के अंदर में तो तो टेस्ट द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ द मीन ऑफ द रैंडम सैंपल इसी में आपका दूसरा क्वेश्चन हम देखते हैं तो लाइफ टाइम ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक बल्ब फॉर ए रैंडम सैंपल ऑफ ए टेन फ्रॉम लार्ज कंसाइनमेंट गेव द फॉलोइंग डाटा आइटम वन आइटम टू आइटम थ्री आइटम फोर आइटम फाइव आइटम सिक्स दीज आर द डिफरेंट आइटम और लाइफ लाइफ ऑफ द बल्ब इन इन आइटम्स ये इस तरीके का है फोर पॉइंट टू तो इस केस में अगर आपको इसका मीन निकाल के उससे फिर ये देखना पड़ेगा कि वो जो सैम्पलिंग आपने करी है वो कितना डेबिएट होता है तो उसके बेसिस पे वन परसेंट या टेन परसेंट या फाइव परसेंट सिग्निफिकेंस लेवल को डिटरमाइन करने के बाद में या उसको फिक्स करने के बाद में एज्यूम करने के बाद में आप निकाल सकते हैं कि वेदर इट पासिस द टेस्ट और इट डू नॉट पास द टेस्ट दूसरा आप देख लीजिए टेस्टिंग डिफरेंस बिटवीन द मीन्स ऑफ द टू सैम्पल इंडिपेंडेंट सैंपल मतलब कि कोई ड्रग ए है कोई दूसरा ड्रग भी है उसमें आप ये पता करना कोशिश करते हैं कि अगर मान लो ए ड्रग और बी ड्रग के बीच में जो उसकी एक्टिविटीज़ हैं वो सेम हैं या एक्टिविटीज़ डिफरेंट हैं या पहली वाली ज़्यादा मोर एफिशेंट है बी ड्रग कम एफिशेंट है तो इन ऐसी ऐसे डाटा को हम टी टेस्ट के थ्रू हम करते हैं लेकिन पहले वाले का फार्मूला और दूसरे वाले का फार्मूला थोड़ा सा डिफरेंट होता है और हम अभी फॉर्मूले को डिस्कस नहीं कर रहे हैं लेकिन यह हम बाद में उसको डिस्कस कर सकते हैं दूसरा देख लीजिए कि फॉर ए रैंडम सैंपल ऑफ टेन परसेंट फैट ऑन डाइट ए द इंक्रीज टू द वेट इन के जी इन सर्टन पीरियड बार ए की ये है दूसरा टैब दूसरा जो सैंपल हमने लिया बारह सैम बारह परसेंट का उसका डाइट बी को हमने कंपेयर किया तो डाइट ए और डाइट बी को विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू द इंक्रीज इन वेट को अगर हम कंपेयर कर रहे हैं तो उस केस में हमको ये देखना पड़ेगा कि ये जो है ना इस कंडीशन के अंदर में लाई करता है और स्टूडेंट टी टेस्ट टी वैल्यू इसके अंदर में टी टेस्ट लगेगा इससे तो तीसरा ये है कि सैंपल्स जो है ना डिपेंडेंट हैं मतलब सैंपल जो है ना इंडिपेंडेंट नहीं है टेस्टिंग द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द मीन्स ऑफ द टू सैंपल जैसे सपोज इसमें क्वेश्चन हैं इसमें क्वेश्चन अगर आप देखें तो इसमें पता चलेगा कि टू वेरीफाई वेदर द कोर्स इन अकॉर्डिंग इन अकाउंटिंग इम्प्रूव द परफॉर्मेंस ए सिमिलर टेस्ट वॉज गिवन टू ट्वेल्व पार्टिसिपेंट्स फॉर बोथ बिफोर एंड आफ्टर द कोर्स द ऑरिजिनल मार्क्स रिकॉर्डेड ऑफ द पार्टिसिपेंट्स वर फोर्टी फोर सिक्सटी सिक्सटी वन फिफ्टी टू थर्टी टू लाइक दिस एंड आफ्टर द कोर्स मार्क्स वर आफ्टर द कोर्स मार्क्स वर फिफ्टी थ्री लाइक दिस तो अब इसमें एक आपको देखना पड़ेगा कि वाज द कोर्स यूजफुल यानी कि पहला जो सब्जेक्ट था उसी सब्जेक्ट में आपने कुछ एक एक फैक्टर इंट्रोड्यूस कर दिया सपोज मान लीजिए आपने ट्यूशन करा दिया बच्चों को अब ये देखें कि ट्यूशन इफेक्टिव है या नहीं है या कोई कोर्स वो अपने इंट्रोड्यूस कर दिया कोर्स इम्प्रूव करने के बाद में कुछ इफेक्ट आया कि नहीं आया उसका जैसे अभी अब फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम चल रहा है फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम से पहले हमने कुछ पैरामीटर्स को मैं लोगों का इन्वॉल्व करके कुछ टेस्ट ले लेते हैं उसके बाद में फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम के बाद में कोई टेस्ट ले लें हम ये कहें कि नहीं फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम से पहले जो है ना जो पार्टिसिपेंट्स थे उनका जो है ना इतना स्कोर आया था और फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम के बाद में इतना स्कोर आया तो इसका मतलब ये हो गया कि ये ये फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम इफेक्टिव हुआ तो इस तरीके के जितने भी प्रॉब्लम्स हैं हम इसको इस कैटेगरी के अंदर में रख के उसको हम सॉल्व करते हैं इसका फॉर्मूला थोड़ा सा डिफरेंट होता है होता है टी टेस्ट ही निकालते हैं लेकिन ये देखना पड़ेगा कि ये इस कैटेगरी में आ रहा है या ये सेकंड वाली कैटेगरी में आ रहा है या फर्स्ट वाली कैटेगरी में आ रहा है तो ये देखना पड़ेगा इसमें मीन से हमको देखना पड़ता है कि मीन से कितना दूर जा रहा है ठीक है अब उसके बाद में ये टी टेस्ट की जो वैल्यू निकालते हैं डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम निकालते हैं उसके अंदर में पॉइंट फाइव ऑफ ये डिफरेंट तो उसमें ये ये पुट द वैल्यू और उसके बाद में ये देखना पड़ेगा कि तो कैलकुलेटेड वैल्यू अन कैलकुलेटेड वैल्यू में वो विद इन लिमिट है या आउट ऑफ लिमिट है वो देख के फराम करते हैं अब इसमें केस इस केस में तो ये था अब नेक्स्ट आया एफ एफ टेस्ट एनालिसिस ऑफ वेरियंस अब अगर हम एफ टेस्ट की बात करते हैं 
so f test is used to test the uh, if the two samples have the same variance if us pehle wale mein mean dekhte the have the same mean is case mein hum variance dekhte hain individual variance dekhte hain kitni vary kar rahe hai values usko pehle wale mein pehle wale mein matlab t test mein hum dekhte the ki uh, if the two samples have the same mean isme hum ye dekhte hain ki if the two samples have the same variance to ye do cheezon ka farak hai isme Uh, the objective of that uh, of the objective of the f test is to find out whether the two independent estimate population variance differ significantly or whether the two samples may have the may may be regarded as the drawn from the normal population having the same variance since f test is based on the ratio of the variance it is also known as the variance ratio test iski assumption same hai jaise aapki normal population ke the normal uske the the normality homogeneity third is the independence of error or ye iske assumptions hain bas isme variance ko dekhna hai pehle means ko dekhna tha whether two samples have the same mean agar dono ka same mean hoga to null hypothesis mean different ho gaya alternate hypothesis is case mein bhi same hai ki agar variance same hai to null hypothesis variance agar different ho gaya to alternate hypothesis the two samples are drawn from the two normal population from the following data test whether then the two samples have the same variance at 5% level or not so here you will have to determine the difference in the variance ab second ab isme ek anova analysis of variance ye bahut hi familiar hai aapko sabhi ko pata hoga anova ke bare mein to isme hum ज्यादा नहीं बोलेंगे बस इतना बताएंगे इसके बारे में कि सपोज अगर मान लीजिए एक डाटा ये है एट टेन सेवन फोर्टीन इलेवन दूसरा डाटा है सेवन फाइव टेन नाइन नाइन अगर इन दो डाटा को बीच में कंपेयर कर रहे हैं इस डाटा को कंपेयर करते हैं इस डाटा के बीच में कंपेयर कर रहे हैं तो हमें एनोवा लगाने की जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगी इसको बीच में हम टी टेस्ट से भी हम कर सकते हैं इसको लेकिन अगर मान तो एट द सेम टाइम हमारे पास में तीन डाटा हो गए चार डाटा हो गए पांच डाटा हो गए इतने डिफरेंट डिफरेंट डाटा अगर आपके पास मिल जाते हैं तो आपको एक साथ उसको उसके बीच में कंपेयर करने के लिए आपको एनोवा लगाना पड़ेगा एनोवा एनोवा लगा के उसको रिजल्ट को इन्फर करना पड़ेगा अब इसमें दो तरीके के एनोवा होते हैं वन वे क्लासीफिकेशन इसमें वन कंपोनेंट होता है वन कंपोनेंट को कंसीडर करते हैं वन करेक्टरिस्टिक को तो वेरी करके दूसरे करेक्टरिस्टिक को जो है हम नॉर्मली उसे कांस्टेंट रखते हैं अब टू वे क्लासिफिकेशन मॉडल में आप देख लीजिए इस केस में दो दो वेरिएशन होती हैं देर आर मैनी सिचुएशन विद रिस्पॉन्स वेरिएबल्स और इंटरेस्ट में भी इफेक्टेड बाई मोर वन फैक्टर इसमें दो फैक्टर्स को कंसीडर एट द सेम टाइम वन वे क्लास वन वे अनुभव में वन फैक्टर को कंसीडर करते थे इसमें दो दो फैक्टर कंसीडर करते हैं सपोज अगर मान लीजिए अगर किसी जैसे एक एग्जांपल हम लेते हैं टू टू स्टडी द परफॉर्मेंस थ्री डिटर्जेंट एंड द थ्री डिफरेंट वाटर टेम्परेचर द फॉलोइंग वेटनेस रीडिंग बर ऑप्टेन विद स्पेशली डिजाइन इक्विपमेंट वाटर टेम्परेचर और डिटर्जेंट दो फैक्टर्स हमने ले लिए कोल्ड वाटर वार्म वाटर हॉट वाटर अब इनका भी अपना रोल होता है किसी भी आ, कपड़े को साफ करने के लिए और डिटर्जेंट का भी अपना रोल होता है तो अब आपको देखना पड़ेगा ये दो फैक्टर्स हैं कि वेदर डिटर्जेंट इज हैविंग सिग्निफिकेंट इफेक्ट और दिस दिस वाटर टेम्परेचर इज ऑल्सो हैविंग द सम इफेक्ट ऑन द वॉशिंग ऑफ द क्लोथ्स तो इस केस में आपको दो तरीके के एनोवा लगाना है जिसको कहते हैं टू बे एनोवा अब जैसे हमने एक एग्जांपल लिया था कि परफॉर्मेंस यूनिवर्सिटीज की परफॉर्मेंस और स्कोर हमने लिया था तो अगर मान लीजिए यूनिवर्सिटी की परफॉर्मेंस अगर हमने लिया है तो थ्री डिफरेंट यूनिवर्सिटीज ऑफ द उत्तराखंड और उनके जो बच्चों के जो मार्क्स आए हैं उनके बीच में हमने लिया तो स्कोर वर्सेज यूनिवर्सिटी की परफॉर्मेंस तो उस केस में हमने टू बे अनुभा को 
कंसिडर करके हम हम उसको एनालाइज करके हम डाटा को बता सकते हैं वेदर जो थ्री यूनिवर्सिटीज की परफॉर्मेंस है वो सेम है या डिफरेंट है अब हम डिजाइन ऑफ एक्सपेरिमेंट की बात करते हैं कि डिजाइन कैसे करते हैं किसी भी एक्सपेरिमेंट का तो डिजाइन जो है ना तीन तरीके की होती है किसी भी एक्सपेरिमेंट डिजाइन हम करते हैं तो नंबर वन इज द कंप्लीटली रेंडमाइज डिजाइन एंड सेकेंड इज द रेंडमाइज ब्लॉक डिजाइन एंड थर्ड इज द लेटिन स्क्वायर डिजाइन तो कंप्लीटली रेंडमाइज डिजाइन में एक्सपेरिमेंटल मटेरियल कोई भी एक्सपेरिमेंटल मटेरियल होता है इट इज ऑफ होमोजीनियस नेचर ये इसी कंडीशन है इट इज इन इन दिस एक्सपेरिमेंटल मटेरियल इज नेसेसरी होमोजीनियस नेचर और द एप्लीकेशन उसके ये है कि अगर वे आर द एक्सपेरिमेंटल मटेरियल इज लिमिटेड इन क्वालिटी इन क्वान्टिटी एंड द होमोजीनियस नेचर वैन इट इज एक्सपेक्टेड दैट सम ऑफ द यूनिट मे बी डिस्ट्रॉयड और फेल टू रिस्पॉन्ड और इन सम स्मॉल एक्सपेरिमेंट द लेबोरेटरी एक्सपेरिमेंट वे आर द एक्सपेरिमेंटल मटेरियल इज um after thoroughly mixing is divided into a small sample which is known as unit and the treatment are applied to these unit these are the applications of the crd ab is case mein aap dekhiye ki keval ek variables hai aur subject animal jo hai na wo hamara aur subject experimental material yani subject animal hai wo hamara constant hai wo homogeneous nahi chakta hai keval humne feed ka effect dekhna hai a b c d these are the type of feed और ये देखना है कि फीड ए फीड बी फीड सी फीड सी आर दे सेम और आर दे डिफरेंट अगर सेम होगा तो हम फिर इसको पूरे डाटा को एनोवा वन बे क्लासिफिकेशन से हम इसको सॉल्व करते हैं ये देखना पड़ेगा फीड ए से जो जो चिक्स में या चिकन में जो भी गेन इन वेट हुआ वो ये हुआ बी ये हुआ कि दिस इज This is the result, and D, this is the result. So, ये different different results आए different feed देने में. अब आपको ये पता करना है कि whether the feed A, B, C are same or different. अब इसमें एक चीज का ख्याल रखना है कि इस design के अंदर में completely completely randomized design में जो तो subject material है या experimental material है वो homogeneous nature. इसीलिए अब जब हम animal में experiment करते हैं तो they are इन ब्रेडेड एक ही तरीके के होने चाहिए एक ही ब्रीड के होने चाहिए आउट ब्रीडेड नहीं होने चाहिए तो यही उसका मतलब होता है कि अगर आप उसको सब्जेक्ट एनिमल को या सब्जेक्ट एक्सपेरिमेंट मटेरियल को एक जैसा रखना है सेकंड इज जैसे सपोज ये दूसरा एग्जांपल है कि एक फील्ड ले लिया फील्ड के अंदर में जो है ना वेराइट मतलब सीड को शो कर लिया और डिफरेंट वेराइटी ऑफ सीड्स ए बी सी डी ई उसके बाद में ये देखा कि ए वैरायटी के सीड में इतना ईल्ड आए बी वैरायटी के सीड्स में इतनी ईल्ड आए सी वैरायटी के सीड्स में इतनी ईल्ड आए डी में इतनी आई अब ये एनालाइज करना है कि वेदर द वैरायटी ऑफ द सीड्स आर आर सेम और डिफरेंट और बिहेविंग वट टाइप ऑफ बिहेवियर दे आर शोइंग तो उसको फिर हम वन बे एनोवा से हम इसको सॉल्व करते हैं अब दूसरा है कि कम्प्लीटली रेंडमाइज ब्लॉक रेंडमाइज ब्लॉक डिजाइन सीआरडी में एक्सपेरिमेंटल मटेरियल मैंने बताया तो होमोजेनियस नेचर लेकिन इसमें जरूरी नहीं है कि एक्सपेरिमेंटल मटेरियल जो है ना होमोजेनियस नेचर का होगा इसमें एक्सपेरिमेंटल मटेरियल जो है ना वो हाइड्रोजेनियस नेचर का होगा जब हाइड्रोजेनियस नेचर का होगा तो उसमें जो डिजाइन हम करते हैं हम डिफरेंट डिफरेंट ब्लॉक्स बना लेते हैं जैसे ब्लॉक्स ए में ब्लॉक सेकेंड में ब्लॉक ये डिफरेंट डिफरेंट ब्लॉक्स में हम डिफरेंट डिफरेंट वेरिएशन का हम ईल्ड देखते हैं और इसमें हम ये भी देखते हैं कि ब्लॉक एक में डिफरेंट वराइटीज का क्या रिस्पॉन्स है ब्लॉक टू में डिफरेंट वराइटी का क्या रिस्पॉन्स आया ब्लॉक थ्री में डिफरेंट वराइटी का क्या रिस्पॉन्स आया और फिर इस ब्लॉक्स को हम वेराइटी और ब्लॉक से बीच में हम बांट देते हैं आपने देखो यहाँ पर जस्ट वो जैसे यहाँ पर आप देखो कि ब्लॉक ए में ए इज ट्वेंटी लाइक हियर एज ट्वेंटी ब्लॉक टू में ए इज ट्वेंटी सिक्स ब्लॉक थ्री में ए इज थर्टी ब्लॉक फोर में ए इज ए इज यू नो ट्वेंटी एट एंड ब्लॉक फाइव में ए इज ट्वेंटी थ्री तो हम वेराइटीज को डिफरेंट ब्लॉक्स में हम इसको 
कन्वर्ट कर लेते हैं रिप्रेजेंट करते हैं जब वेराइटीज और ब्लॉक के बीच में एक जब टेबुलर फॉर्म में इसको रिप्रेजेंट करते हैं फिर हम इसको सॉल्व करते हैं वेराइटी वर्सेज ब्लॉक्स के बीच में तो ये जितने ब्लॉक्स हैं दे आर नॉट होमोजेनस इन नेचर यानी कि एक्सपेरिमेंटल मटेरियल इज नॉट होमोजेनस इट इज हेटोजेनस ब्लॉक वन डिफर्स टू ब्लॉक टू डिफर्स टू ब्लॉक थ्री फोर एंड लाइक वाइज तो वेराइटी अलग हैं और ब्लॉक्स अलग हैं तो इस केस में जब हम सॉल्व करते हैं प्रॉब्लम्स को या हम एनालाइज करते हैं डाटा को वो टू वे एनोवा से हम करते हैं उसको सी आर डी केसेज में हमने वन वे एनोवा का हमने इस्तेमाल किया था इसके अंदर में टू वे एनोवा से हम इसको सॉल्व करते हैं लेटिन स्क्वायर डिज़ाइन बेसिकली ये एग्रीकल्चर उसमें काम आता है उस केस में फर्टिलिटी लेवल और सीड का जो डिफरेंस है इसमें मोस्टली एग्रीकल्चर साइंटिस्ट इसमें यूज करते हैं उसमें सपोज फाइव टाइप ऑफ फर्टिलाइजर्स ए बी सी डी एंड ई एंड टू लॉकिंग फैक्टर लॉकिंग फैक्टर क्या है फर्टिलिटी लेवल भी है हालांकि इसमें दो लॉकिंग फैक्टर हैं एक फर्टिलिटी लेवल भी है और और सीड डिफरेंस भी है तो इस केस को अगर हम देखें तो उसमें आपको पता चलेगा तो लेटिन स्क्वायर डिज़ाइन में नंबर ऑफ रोज इज टू नंबर ऑफ कॉलम एंड नंबर ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट बराबर बराबर के होते हैं इसमें आप कम ज़्यादा नहीं कर सकते इसको तो इसको भी हम टू बे अनुवा से हम इसको सॉल्व करते हैं अगर हम कंपेरिजन करें तो आपको पता चलेगा कि सी आर टी आर बी टी एन एल एच डी के अंदर में जो डिफरेंस मिलेगा आपको समझने के लिए वो यह है कि इट इज़ सूटेबल फॉर द होमोजीनस एक्सपेरिमेंटल मटेरियल इट इज़ सूटेबल फॉर वैन द एक्सपेरिमेंटल मटेरियल इज हेटोजीनस विद रिस्पेक्ट टू वन करेक्टर एंड इट इज सूटेबल वैन द एक्सपेरिमेंटल मटेरियल इज हेटोजीनस विद रिस्पेक्ट टू टू करेक्टर इट इज़ यूजफुल फॉर एनी नंबर ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट फॉर एनी नंबर ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट इट इज़ यूजफुल फॉर द लार्ज नंबर ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट मोर देन ट्वेंटी ये इम्पॉर्टेंट है इट इज इट इज़ फॉर लार्ज नंबर ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट मोर देन ट्वेंटी द यूज फॉर द ट्रीटमेंट नंबर मोर देन फाइव सेकेंड इज मे वेरी फ्रॉम ट्रीटमेंट टू ट्रीटमेंट नो रिप्लीकेशन इज इज द सेम इन ऑल द ट्रीटमेंट इट इज फॉर आर बी डी एंड हेयर द नंबर ऑफ रिप्लीकेशन इज बिकॉज नंबर ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट ट्रीटमेंट आर कंप्लीट रेंडमाइज in the experimental material here the treatment are randomized in each block with a fresh set of random ex- numbers treatment are so randomized that every treatment occurs once and only once in each row and each column the experimental material is divided into number of treatment and the number of replications the whole experimental material is divided into the blocks of homogeneous nature versus which is known as blocks and here द मटेरियल डिवाइड इन टू द रोज एंड द कॉलम तो बेसिकली हम फार्मास्यूटिकल यूज में सी आर टी एंड आर बी टी यूज करते हैं एल एच डी नहीं करते हैं करते हैं लेकिन उसकी अपनी कंडीशन हैं लेकिन हम इस केस में मोस्टली जो नॉर्मली हम यूजली हम उसको नहीं करते हैं अब वी कोर फॉर द वी कम फॉर द नॉन पैरामेट्रिक टेस्ट जितने पैरामेट्रिक टेस्ट हैं उसके एग्जाम चाहे वो टी टेस्ट हो जेड टेस्ट हो एफ टेस्ट हो आर बेस्ड ऑन द जमशन दैट द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन फ्रॉम बेस द सैम्पल हैज बिन ड्रॉन इज नॉर्मल मतलब कि नॉर्मल पॉपुलेशन से उस उसको जो सैम्पल को ड्रॉ किया जाता है लेकिन कभी क्या होता है कि जब जब फ्रिक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन कर आप बनाते हैं तो नॉर्मल नहीं होता है वो स्क्यूड होता है एक तरफ झुका होता है या उसका पैटर्न जो है ना नॉर्मल से एकदम डिफर करता है तो ऐसे डाटा को आप नॉन पैरामेट्रिक टेस्ट जो है ना यूज uh, करके उसको एनालाइज करते हैं उसको so, उसको कहते हैं नॉन पैरामेट्रिक टेस्ट अब नॉन पैरामेट्रिक टेस्ट में कौन कौन से टेस्ट आते हैं दिस टेस्ट डू नॉट डिपेंड ऑन द पॉपुलेशन पैरामीटर एंड इज नॉट द नॉन पैरामेट्रिक देर फॉर काई स्क्वायर टेस्ट साइन टेस्ट रैंक सम टेस्ट रैंक रन टेस्ट एस टेस्ट ये जितने भी टेस्ट हैं स्टेस टेस्ट की इस्तेमाल करते हैं लेकिन इसमें आपको बस इतना देखना पड़ेगा कि जो अगर फ्रिक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन कर ड्रा किया अगर नॉर्मली बिहेव कर रहे हैं तो आप समझ लीजिए कि आपको टी टेस्ट जेड टेस्ट एफ टेस्ट आप लगा के आप उसको कर सकते हैं लेकिन अगर नहीं कर रहा है इसका मतलब ये हुआ कि उसको नॉन पैरामेट्रिक टेस्ट को इस्तेमाल करना पड़ेगा अब कंडीशन क्या है काइस पर टेस्ट की हम काइस पर टेस्ट को हम इलेबोरेट करते हैं यहाँ पर 
चाहे उसका टेस्ट की कंडीशन ये है कि टेस्ट शुड नॉट बी यूज वेन द एन इज लेस देन फिफ्टी फिफ्टी से कम की वैल्यूज अगर है तो हम काइस का टेस्ट इस्तेमाल नहीं करते हैं आप इसके कौन कौन से यूजेज हैं वो आप देखते हैं काइस पर टेस्ट एज ए टेस्ट इज एट इज ए टेस्ट ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंस दैट इज वी कैन फाइंड आउट वेदर टू और मोर एट्रीब्यूट आर एसोसिएटेड और नॉट सेकेंड फॉर एग्जाम्पल वी कैन फाइंड आउट वेदर द क्वीन इज इज इफेक्टिव इन कंट्रोलिंग फीवर और नॉट अगर मान लो दो फैक्टर हैं यस या नो में तो हम दोनों जुड़े हुए हैं या दोनों के बीच में कोई रिलेशन है या नहीं है तो हम उसको काइस पर टेस्ट के से हम देख लेते हैं कि वेदर दे आर डिपेंडेंट और दे आर नॉट डिपेंडेंट काइस पर टेस्ट टेस्ट फॉर एज ए गुडनेस ऑफ फिट अगर आपको कोई डाउट है कि ये टेस्ट आपने सही लगाया या नहीं लगाया या टी टेस्ट लगाने की जगह आपने एफ टेस्ट लगा दिया एफ टेस्ट की जगह आपने टी टेस्ट लगा दिया तो अगर आप काइस पर टेस्ट से हम पता कर सकते हैं कि वो उस टेस्ट के लिए सूटेबल था या नहीं था तो उसे कहते टेस्ट टेस्ट एज ए गुडनेस ऑफ फिट एंड काइस पर टेस्ट टेस्ट फॉर द काइस पर टेस्ट एज ए टेस्ट ऑफ होमोजिनिटी तो ये देखना पड़ेगा कि वेदर द डाटा इज होमोजेनस इन नेचर का है या नहीं है या एक डाटा होमोजेनस बैकग्राउंड से लिया गया है या डिफरेंट पॉपुलेशन से उठाया या हेटोजेनस पॉपुलेशन से उठाया गया तो ये टेस्ट भी हम कर सकते हैं काइस पर टेस्ट से अब जैसे कोई एग्जाम्पल ले लेते हैं एक क्वेश्चन है इन एन एंटी मेरियल मेलेरियल कंपेन इन सर्टन एरिया क्विलिन वाज एडमिनिस्टर्ड टू एट हंड्रेड ट्वेल्व परसेंट आउट ऑफ द टोटल पॉपुलेशन ऑफ थ्री टू फोर एट द नंबर ऑफ फीवर केसेस इज शोन बिलो ये अब ट्रीटमेंट दिया क्विलिन यू गॉट सम गॉट द फीवर सम हैव नो फीवर तो दीज आर द डाटा अब इसमें यह देखना पड़ेगा कि क्वीन इज इफेक्टिव इन चेकिंग द मलेरिया और नॉट तो ये डाटा निकालने के बाद में आप में सबसे पहले तो सिग्निफिकेंस लेवल आपको देखना पड़ेगा नल हाइपोथिस लगानी पड़ेगी हम और फिर सेम तरीके से जो है ना आपको कैलकुलेटेड वैल्यू और टेबलेटेड वैल्यू के बीच में जो है ना काइस पर टेस्ट लगा के आप पता कर सकते हैं कि वेदर द क्वीन इज इफेक्टिव इन चेकिंग द मलेरिया और नॉट सेकेंड एक्सपेरिमेंट इन एन एक्सपेरिमेंट ऑफ इम्यूनाइजेशन ऑफ द कैटल फ्राम ट्यूबरक्लोसिस द फॉलोइंग रिजल्ट वर अप टन अब इनोकुलेटेड द अफेक्टेड इज ट्वेल्व नॉन अफेक्टेड इज ट्वेंटी सिक्स नॉट इनोकुलेटेड सिक्सटीन लाइक दिस तो अब ये देखो कि वेदर द इफेक्ट ऑफ वैक्सीन इन कंट्रोलिंग द ट्यूबरक्लोसिस इज आर देयर और नॉट तो इस केस में भी आप काइस पर टेस्ट लगाइए काइस पर टेस्ट लगाने का अप्लाई करने के बाद में आप आराम से आप किसी कंक्लूजन में पहुंच सकते हैं इसमें एक 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 एग्जांपल और देते हैं फ्रॉम द डाटा गिवन बिलो अबाउट द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ 250 पेशेंट सफरिंग फ्रॉम द डिजीज स्टेट वेदर द न्यू ट्रीटमेंट इज सुपीरियर टू द कन्वेंशनल ट्रीटमेंट और नॉट जैसे कोई ट्रीटमेंट नया है कुछ ट्रीटमेंट पुराने हैं तो दोनों के बीच में कोई कंपेरिजन किया कुछ आपने देखे नंबर ऑफ पेशेंट को ऑब्जर्व किया और डाटा को जनरेट किया अब आप उसमें आप काइस का टेस्ट लगा के देख लीजिए कि अगर काइस का टेस्ट अगर एप्लीकेबल है तो उसमें काइस का टेस्ट लगा के फिर जो आप एंड कंक्लूड द रिजल्ट एंड फोर्थ इज इन सर्टन ड्रग इज क्लेम टू बी इफेक्टिव इन क्योरिंग द कोल्ड इन एन एक्सपेरिमेंट on 228 people with cold half of them were given the drug and half of them were given sugar pill is a placebo treatment ke liye aap dekh lete hain isme so ab ye dekho ki whether the test the hypothesis that the drug is no better than the sugar pill for the for curing cold is ka is ka test you apply aur usme aaram se to ye sari cheeze hain isme dekh lijiye aap isme agar frequency distribution karwa agar humne ka is ka test nikal to wo ye behave kar karta hai अगर नॉर्मल कर्व होता तो बेल शेप का होता है पी का भी ऐसा होता है लेकिन ये चूंकि इसीलिए इसको कहा गया है नॉन पैरामेट्रिक टेस्ट आप देख लीजिए स्लाइड में कि हाइपोथेसिस टेस्टिंग में दो तरीके की टेस्टिंग होती है पैरामेट्रिक टेस्ट होते हैं नॉन पैरामेट्रिक टेस्ट होते हैं अगर पैरामेट्रिक टेस्ट में अगर वन टेस्ट वन सैंपल है तो 
टी टेस्ट करते हैं या जेड टेस्ट करते हैं अगर टू सैंपल्स हैं इंडिपेंडेंट सैंपल्स हैं या क्वेयर सैंपल्स हैं तो टू सैंपल इंडिपेंडेंट सैंपल्स में तो टू ग्रुप टी टेस्ट और जेड टेस्ट भी कर लेते हैं उसमें क्वेयर सैंपल्स हैं तो आप इसमें देख ले सकते हैं कि इसमें पैरामेडिक टेस्ट में पेयर सैंपल के लिए अलग एंड पेयर टी टेस्ट हैं उसके लिए तो ये डिफरेंट डिफरेंट कैटेगरीज को हमने डिवाइड किया है ताकि जो है ना आसानी से समझ में आ जाए कि कहाँ पर कौन सा टेस्ट में अप्लाई करना है फॉर द फॉर द गुड रिजल्ट और फॉर द बेटर रिजल्ट नॉन पैरामेडिक टेस्ट में वन सैम्पल टू सैम्पल वन सैंपल अगर है तो फाइव स्क्वायर टेस्ट टू सैंपल इंडिपेंडेंट सैंपल या तो पेयर सैंपल और डिफरेंट टेस्ट हैं इंडिपेंडेंट सैंपल फाइव स्क्वायर टेस्ट लाइक दिस साइन टेस्ट दिस आर द कंपेरिजन कंपेरिजन फॉर कंपेरिजन चार्ट द पैरामेट्रिक एंड नॉन पैरामेट बेस्ट the basis for the comparison the meaning the statistical test in which the specific assumptions are made about population parameters is known as the parametric test the isme non parametric test mein aap dekh lete hain the statistical test used in the case of non metric independent variables is non parametric test the the basis of the test uh, statistic the is a distribution it is arbitrary ये इम्पॉर्टेंट है इसके अंदर में कि अगर इसका जो जो डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन है वो प्रॉपर तरीके डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन है इसका डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन है वो आर्बिट्री है द मेजर ऑफ द मेजरमेंट लेवल द इंटरवल ऑफ रेशियो जो डाटा को जो प्रिंसिपल जेंड करते हैं पैरामेडिक टेस्ट में तो उसको या एक रेगुलर इंटरवल्स पे या रेगुलर रेशियो पे हम उसको शो कर पाते हैं इस केस में जो है ना हमारी जो वैल्यूज होती हैं वो नॉमिनल और ऑर्डिनल वैल्यूज होती हैं ठीक है ना नॉमिनल और आर्डिनल वाला तो ये ये डिफरेंसेस के अंदर में खास तौर से हैं और मेजर ऑफ द सेंट्रल टेंडेंसी तो मीन से हम जो है ना हमेशा ये देखते हैं कि कितना पास में है या कितना दूर है इस केस में जो है ना हम मीडियन को मीडियन का सहारा लेते हैं कि मीडियन से कितना पास है कितना दूर है इंफॉर्मेशन ऑवर द पॉपुलेशन देर इज़ ए कम्प्लीटली नोन और यहाँ पर जो है ना चूँकि डाटा जो है ना डिस्क्रिट डाटा है कंटिन्यूस डाटा नहीं होता है इट इज़ डिस्क्रिट डाटा इट इज़ अनबल तो एक्सेप्टेबिलिटी इट इज इट इज़ वेरिएबल और यहाँ पर केवल जो है ना वेरिएबल्स भी हैं साथ में एट्रीब्यूट्स भी हैं एट्रीब्यूट्स अगर मान लो किसी चीज़ का आपने दे दिया यह बहुत अच्छा है यह बहुत अच्छा है ये अच्छा है यह बहुत अच्छा है यह गुड है वेरी गुड है एक्सीलेंट है तो ये एट्रीब्यूट्स होते हैं तो किसी एक्सपेरिमेंट में अगर आपने एट्रीब्यूट्स भी दे सकते हैं लेकिन इसमें पैरामेडिक टेस्ट में कोई एट्रीब्यूट्स आप नहीं दे सकते तो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट thank you very much so nice of you uh, thank you so much sir uh, for this valuable session uh, now can we go to the question answer session okay okay no problem uh, there are few questions over here the first question is where should we apply principal component analysis by miss monica mali principal component analysis देखिए उसके सेल्स में है ना आपको ये देखना पड़ेगा कि आप किस तरीके का कंपोनेंट जो है ना उसमें आप रखना चाहते हैं कौन कौन से कंपोनेंट उसमें जो प्रोमिनेंट कंपोनेंट्स हैं और उसके कंपोनेंट को अपने ऑब्जेक्टिव्स क्या हैं जैसे हमने पहले स्लाइड में आपको स्लाइड दिख रही है आपको स्लाइड में सबसे पहले हमने देखा था हम स्लाइड दिख रही है आपको यस सर स्लाइड में हमने सबसे पहले इसी बात को हमने शो किया था कि आपको सबसे पहले ऑब्जेक्टिव्स को देखना पड़ेगा कि किस तरीके का ऑब्जेक्टिव थे प्रिंसिपल जो कंपोनेंट को जो आप बता रहे हैं वो हमारे ऑब्जेक्टिव्स के ऊपर डिपेंड करता है किस तरीके का ऑब्जेक्टिव आपने सिलेक्ट किया और ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑब्जेक्टिव के बैकग्राउंड में कौन सा टेस्ट लगेगा उस हिसाब से हम आप उसको इवेल्यूट करते हैं ओके सर थैंक यू आर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज हाउ टू डू वन वे एनोवा एनालिसिस विथ टू ट्रीटमेंट एंड थ्री डोजेज a level in each treatment by dr amartya de one way anova one way anova analysis with two treatments and three dose levels in each treatment aaram se ho jayega aap usko group mein baant dijiye ye aap usko group mein baant ke ek jaise main aapko slide dikhata hu main batata hu aapko anova ke slide dikhate hain jaise jaise one way anova hai na to agar maan lo 
इसमें आपने एक एट्रीब्यूट अगर आपने दे दिया इस एट्रीब्यूट में और साथ में दूसरा एट्रीब्यूट दूसरे तरीके से दे दिया तो वो वन वे अनुवा से हम उसको उसको जो है ना हम एनालाइज कर सकते हैं तो बस ये है कि उसके साथ में वो जो एट्रीब्यूट्स हैं वो वो सिग्निफिकेंटली या उसके साथ में इस तरीके से अगर जुड़े रहेंगे या उस तरीके से आप उसको एनालाइज कर सकते हैं जिस तरीके से एक मिनट Can you please repeat the question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. How to do one-way ANOVA analysis with two treatments and three dose levels in each treatment? ये हम आपको इसके बारे में मैं थोड़ा सा सोच के बताऊंगा ये मैं थोड़ा सा कंफ्यूज कर रहा हूँ इसके बारे में ओके सर यू कैन मेल अस ओके आई विल आई विल डेफिनेटली डेफिनेटली या या ओके सर सो दैट वाज ऑल अबाउट द क्वेश्चन आंसर सेशन आई हैंड ओवर द सेशन नेक्स्ट टू शीतल मैम फॉर फर्दर कंटिन्यूएशन थैंक सर फॉर फॉर द सेशन आवर � as he is a coordinator of this program but still as a courtesy i introduce him he is mr pritam juwarkar he is having more than 11 years of teaching and research experience currently he is working as academic in charge and head of the pharmacognosy and phytochemistry department at konkan gyan ki rahul and research institute karjat Sir has three Indian patents under his credential. His major area or research areas are evaluation and standardization of herbal formulation, isolation, isolation and characterization of compounds. Responsible for bioactivity, identification and development of nutraceutical and excipients from natural sources. He has received several project grants from different institutes. He also authored one book. published around 14 research articles in various national and international journals one youtube channel had been opened for pharmacognosy name of tam juwarkar and it has around 1.3000 subscribers i hand i hand over uh, section to sir sir please uh, is it audible ma'am yes yes sir shall we yes, start sir. yes Just one second Okay, sir. Shall we Please start, start, sir? Okay. Please start, sir. Uh, uh, good afternoon, all. I firstly, as an organizer, I am just regretted whatever the technical issues we face today. And uh, as online, we are not so familiar. But because of the lockdown, we are had here had a problem of uh, online sessions and online sessions. In that, uh, the technical issues are there. So sorry for it. I regret uh, from organizing team, and I thankful to all the members, uh, the organizers. Uh, then uh, thanks to Sir Dr. Sanket. Uh, our principal sir mohan kare sir and uh, our uh, chm college sorry dr lh shirandani college of pharmacy principal sir dr parag sir to give us the uh, opportunity to organize such event and uh, giving me opportunity as a for the representing one my uh, topic that is nutraceuticals in india and challenges uh, and uh, opportunities the challenging opportunity i had given but it has a challenges so as a basically we are starting with the session the functional foods are the food which uh, are benefited beyond the energy and the basic nutrition the nutraceutical substances we had seen uh, that is a uh, provide the health benefit including the prevention and treatment of the disease so when we think about uh, a specificity of the component that is nothing but a provide the health benefits it include the prevention and treatment of the disease just one second Slides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will put the slides. Is it visible, sir? Now? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, sir. 
so uh, specifically nutraceutical ingredient when we think about the nutraceutical ingredient these are the substances which are maybe food or part of the food provide the health benefit including the prevention and treatment of disease as we know uh, the chronic uh, diseases are there heart disease cancer hypertension and uh, obesity these are nothing but the onset of it it may be because of the digestive problem because of the particularly we can say any of it but uh, it has been proved that nutraceutical ingredients are really inhibiting this onset of actions so uh, basically the nutraceutical and dietary supplement or a functional food uh, these are nothing but having a two major categories one is a functional food and one is a nothing but a nutraceutical the first is food which is nothing but uh, it is a rich in a nutraceutical component whereas a second one that is nothing but a specifically nutraceutical it is a fortified or it may be added nutraceutical ingredient in efficacious amount so when we think about this uh, two ways uh, the food functional food as well as a nutraceutical nutraceutical is a ingredient which has been incorporated in the food which is nothing but a supplement level of the dose health promoting nutraceuticals now when we think about the classification based on the nutraceutical dietary supplement the classification is based on the many uh, different different uh, types likewise uh, food and non food source then uh, there are another ways depend on the mechanism of action but here i am discussing a classification based on the nutraceutical that is a chemical nature so nutraceutical phenolic compounds are there like as a cumarin tannin lignin anthocyanin then flavonoids then protein amino acid base uh, specifically allyl as compound capsinoids are coming then that uh, isothiocyanate indoles and choline then uh, carbohydrate and derivative these are the nothing but uh, innovative areas uh, today uh, morning session had kunal sir deliver the carbohydrate derivatives and polymer so that uh, carbohydrate de derivatives are nothing but can be used as a polymer right? it can be used for the li lipos or we can say increase or design the nutraceutical component so then fatty acids and structural lipids these are another we can say uh, omega 3 fatty acid uh, then uh, various conjugated linoleic acid then mufai mono unsaturated fatty acids pingolipid these are the coming era from the uh, way of uh, nutraceutical then minerals are nothing but the evergreen the isoprenoid compound nowadays it is nothing but the zeaxanthin is one of the we can say and astaxanthin these are the one of the top most uh, uh, molecules in last year for the from the isoprenoid compound then microbials as nothing but a probiotic and prebiotic here the classification has been uh, we had discussed and now uh, the nutraceutical the ingredient the delivery format and incorporation of the nutraceutical in a different functional food type it is nothing but very important say example i can give you the omega 3 uh, and the structural lipids so this can be uh, deliver in the solid or semi solid form so when we think about it so we we'll go to the next slides uh that is uh, incorporated in the food so specifically we can say uh, these super food or health food are nothing but uh, mainly acceptable amount in a beverages dietary supplement mainly in the powder form but uh, it is not such a, uh, accepted in the uh, specifically other format like tablet and capsule because there is nothing but a fatigue uh, is coming under the not only the senior but uh, melanin and adult and, and particularly we can say uh, children also so uh, first of all we will go for the technology uh, which are the challenges are the basically i try to correlate the questions with the challenges so challenges here the technological challenges we know uh, that is nothing but uh, what format nutraceutical is required in which format it is been required for the then uh, what is the compatibility of the chosen food product then solubility of the uh, solubility in water or liquid phase because many of the bio component are nothing but liquid soluble so it is uh, very difficult we have to design such a that so that it can be absorbable on a uh, specifically in human being and then uh, then uh, survival hitting low ph mixing and uh, specifically does it need encapsulation for the solubilization in the food then does it need taste order color masking this is one of the greatest challenge which we uh, we are facing in the nutraceutical division uh, so taste and order is nothing but very important for because many of the bio component are nothing but bitter in taste and that is not palatable by the children as well as a particularly youngsters also so and uh, there is a acceptability of the overall balance food formulation then food matrices so will the food matrices compromise uh, enhance the bioavailability of the nutraceutical ingredient so how uh, one uh, second uh, 
once we uh, sorry for interrupting so uh, uh, specifically is there any interaction of in, in, interaction of component is uh, process does added and that specifically interaction of the food matrices because the glassy matrices is also prefer in nowadays uh, which is nothing but example i can give sugar can be converted into a glassy matrices that can be protecting a protein from the environmental conditions so that is one of the we can say uh, nowadays it has been uh, proposed then marketing uh, marketing wise the particular age group which we are targeting then specific health benefit and target in particular region culture because halal products and a specific halal certificate is there then uh, also the certificates of like vegetarian or we can say vegan sources so that is very importantly we can say in a, a marketing strategy then particular region we are uh, specifically we are thinking because globalized uh, there are different uh, uh, requirement and regulatories are there for the nutraceutical then when we think about the regulatories uh, the what are the regulatory standard in each region the nutraceutical allowed a type of food because some of the foods are not allowed in usa but allowed in india so that is nothing but we can say there is a variation in there then which are the required make a claim so these are the all we can say legal challenge obligations are there these are the challenges which can be faced when we uh, are developing any nutraceutical so these are the basic challenges now when we think about the power of convergence as a nutraceutical when we think about the growth pattern so which are the emerging opportunities and which are the growth patterns so in that i had made some that uh, convergence word convergence is nothing but how the momentum and the uh, uh, movement of the product and the requirement of the product it will be changed depend upon the how the era is a changing so in that first is nothing but the category convergence when we think about the category convergence uh, is a specifically category means what the persons which are uh, specifically acceptable amount at supplement food beverages and pharmaceuticals then as a consumer it is may be required the incorrupted diet are nothing but the most convenient and non intrusive part the most convenient and non intrusive part means what uh, the powder uh, which can be you, you are using for the nutraceutical origin so that can be a one of the dose parameter then channel convergence when we think about the channel convergence the consumers are uh, self diagnosing nowadays uh, the all associated associated information is available in the form of online so uh, on a fingertips uh, he can a consumer can able to identify the channels of the convergence that claim then review of it research then authenticity of the product which are the comparative products are available so it is on the uh, specifically depend on the technological convergence also so consumer convergence and technological convergence in that it is very important that self dosing and uh, self diagnosing fields are available because of the technological convergence everybody by using a normal electrical belt or we can say watch you can able to uh, diagnose or able to particularly we can say monitor diagnose is not the perfect word monitor is perfect word monitor their particularly cholesterol level their walking style their uh, particularly sleeping habits and all we can say so that is very importantly we can say there is a change or convergence power is there so likewise we have to develop our nutraceutical like this way then when we think about the functional food and beverages this is another we can say interesting part beverages so beverages are nothing but acceptable so functional food as we studied that uh, for functional food are encompasses the potential health benefit including the any modified food ingredient and which is the health benefit beyond the traditional nutrient so here we can use the incorporation is say example nowadays we can able to get the many of the advertise on the television likewise uh, that we required uh, a specific uh, com uh, compound is been added in that fortified the word is fortified or enhance the nutritional value now how big uh, is this sector so it is a very much big sector which is having a 7.2 millions of uh, specifically we can say uh, a growth rate is there 7.2% sorry 7.2% of the cagr cumulative growth is there so this is very important that as far as the nutritional changes are nothing but uh, is increasing and the nutrition awareness is increasing so that is very importantly we can say this sector will be expanding 
and in india is nothing but very much challenging but it is not so difficult also so i will give the with explanation the example and then now come to the point the next is increase the importance of the science and clinical validation see nowadays every from toothpaste to every aspect which has been advertised it should be go under the clinical validation but integrate of the science if you had the data uh, and if it is a product is approved in specifically it is been approved in a component or we can say fssi approved list then you require the data for it you require the data which can be easily uh, we can produce and we can get the approval of the product so that is nothing but uh, when we think about the innovative product and innovative dosage and delivery format the pill fatigue we can say uh, that is nothing but one of the we can say opinion uh, from the all survey we got the answer that seniors are nothing but we can say baby boomers and millennials are nothing but having a pill fatigue so they required something new dosage form say example i can give the one one of the good example that is a bedlets bedlets of the paper mate is nothing but dotero is one of the company who is a supporting a uh, who is having a product of bedlets and these bedlets are nothing but available uh, on the online also and it is very uh, we can say uh, very uh, palatable also very small component and but it is very palatable so these are nothing but we can say few example so innovation is any time is required from this uh, segment of the nutraceutical because it's not a uh, medicine but it is protective and health protective particularly uh, likewise medicine so this is very important of uh, the convergence which is nothing but uh, came in the way now uh, we will move towards the ahead uh, that nutraceutical formulations and challenges see many of the nutraceutical components are uh, specifically a bioactive isolated nutraceutical from the natural source so when we think about the nutraceutical component the various types of the specific function nature components are coming so in that uh, very important is what which parameter we are utilizing which component we are targeting which isolated component extraction method we are utilizing which are the characterization of the compound uh, methods we are utilizing so it is very important that we have to evaluate it and releasing the specific process that is a by means of different analytical and different uh, methodology can be used nowadays the trend is uh, co2 extra a particular super critical fluid extraction because it is it does not require a uh, specifically solvent and if anti solvent is there definitely it is been useful because nothing any solvent impurity will be lies in the in between the product and that is nothing but we can able to get this can be solved the isolation of the nutraceutical by comparative review of literature literature that accurate extraction method isolation and the characterization validity of the method because extraction method patentable can give a revenue to academic researcher yes it is possible that uh, i had a example of some nutraceutical company i associated with the one a nutraceutical company in that we are paying almost 10 rupees per product to the person who is extracting method has been patentable so it is has a chance that every academic researcher can move on and can work out in the nutraceutical then the next problem or challenge we are uh, facing in this poor aqueous solubility because the most of the lipid lipid bioactive components are there and lipid bioactive component and definitely it is uh, having a problem in absorption and bioavailability so some some of the compound i can say three uh, omega 3 fatty acid then phytosterol phytos and all then carotenoid oil soluble vitamin along with that curcumin curcumin is also as i discussed by the sir and then uh, this water soluble costing is very difficult and or we can say to maintain so uh, component should be or you are design designing of the nutraceutical such a that it will enhance the solubility as well as it will protect the new component along with that it will increase the absorption now the next point which is nothing but we are having a challenge is a high melting point of the nutraceutical some what happen we are utilizing a fatty alcohols carotenoids as well as a phytosterol in that condition there is a specifically we can say uh, they are normal at a room temperature crystalline in the room temperature but they will create a problem when they are incorrupted in the process of the food uh, we can say on nutraceutical 
when we are incorruptible with the other so it will react and it will get increase unstable when you increase the temperature or we can say if you are using methods like that so that is a very obnoxious and that will create a problem like stability then shelf life and also it is affecting a problem with the deterioration then indisagreeable appearance so that is nothing but we will face a problem in a challenge or we can say it is a challenge uh, in the high melting point of neutral silicon then in chemical instability chemical instability so because many of the as we seen in a classification also uh, there are uh, we can say uh, there are compounds uh, many of them is nothing but polyphenol so these polyphenolic compound are having a instability problem that it will react with the many of the other component and uh, these will create extend a, a particular it will affect the shelf life it will affect the storage condition it will affect the particularly we can say your component degrade the component and that is a uh, main drawback of the compound uh, which are nothing but belongs to polyphenols so when we think about a chemical instability the development of the nano scale product will definitely or encapsulation can definitely overcome the chemical instability so it will protect the, your drug or we can say nutraceutical component or ingredient and that will create a increase in a particularly palatability as well as a increase in the activity or mechanism action and bioavailability of the component also then uh, the next one is nothing but probiotic compound here the nowadays uh, many of the probiotic drinks are available and these drinks are nothing but have a uh, Uh, live bacteria, or it may be a uh, specifically because of the live bacteria. It is uh, you have to select the proper bacterial strain, and proper bacterial strain should be selected. Otherwise, uh, it will create a problem to the consumer. Then the next one point which we can say we can't able to neglect the risk and safety. because uh, many of the components are nothing but the protein and nowadays it's a mandatory for the several trials we have to take and uh, it is clinical validated data we have to produce and that is nothing but for the approval of any product and identification of the characteristic causing potential hazard that we have to identify so because the proteinous material may be incorrupted so definitely it will create a problem with the risk and allergies and uh, hyper reaction so that will be avoided and these are the formulation challenges we can able to get in the uh, neutraceutical and then challenges in corruption see uh, as a single moiety uh, may a uh, few products are available but other products are available in neutraceutical nowadays in market is uh, specifically available in the incorporation of various neutraceutical foods so uh, there is a physical uh, when we delivering any neutraceutical ingredient the challenge is what uh, its solubility its state of the uh, matter means what solid semi solid powder liquid form which we want to deliver so that will uh, create a problem in physical chemical biological properties so we have to go through the neutraceutical ingredient physical chemical biological properties of it then test texture stability and acceptability of the final product is depend on these all so uh, when we think about the four format delivery so whenever you are designing any product very important is what your palatability your test your aroma then along with that ma which matrix you are utilizing which designing innovative product we are utilizing this nothing but will create a problem in a specific component so very important is what whenever we are utilizing like this uh, neutraceutical it will give a way that it should not affect the shelf life of the component any ingredient in the formulation should not affect the test any ingredient in the formulation should not affect the texture stability and acceptability of it so these are the various point which can be uh, are challenging and uh, this can be solved easily by the use of various uh, we can say various methods which have been available no complexities in nutraceutical incorporation because uh, sensory perception then physical chemical characteristic beverages and all others we can say so bioavailability and complexity we should avoid with the help of uh, our designing or innovative design of the product next i have report
okay now how we can avoid this strategies for the neutrosity can corporation see there are many uh, many uh, in corruption uh, facilities or we can say methods or strategies available here i am just giving you whatever the important which has been following in recent area so that is nothing but uh, micro and, and nano encapsulation technology there are different uh, delivery systems are available but design when we design about the immersion based delivery system likewise primary double multi layer immersion then liposomes inclusion bilosomes inclusion along with that liposphere bedless that we discussed in the prior uh, version uh, sorry prior the our lecture the bedless which is nothing but nowadays it is very acceptable and only one company i saw that is nothing but they are preparing there are many companies but one company is a leader in this and dotero dotero is preparing the paper mint uh, bedless also they had used a saccharin so in that Uh, specifically we can say along with that we have to think about the customer also it is a sugar free it should be required or it is required the palatability so that is nothing but one of the method we can use or strategy that is a micro or nano encapsulation technology we can utilize then another we can say methods likewise uh, drying a spray drying freeze drying method then emulsification homogenization microfluidization membrane emulsification then complexation coating extrusion gel formation layer by layer deposition and conservation and the finally we can say a uh, discuss as supercritical anti solvent perception so these are nothing but a various method which is nothing but we can say and encapsulation method has been utilized so these are the very very important aspects of uh, neutrosotical uh, delivery or we can say innovative delivery of the component when we think about the strategy wise the global market before the global market uh, global market is accepting only the innovative ideas the innovative methods because in uh, in india the regulation has started in 2006 as fssi has been developed or we can say it is coming back but uh, now the change whatever the usa usa developed in 1994 so that is nothing but the these methods we have to come with the innovative idea innovative component innovative nutraceutical that can be create a very much interest of the consumer so that is nothing but what we can say easily market now we'll go to the next slide so which are the encapsulation uh, benefits so i can uh, come to uh, this particularly some some of the example i had taken the omega 3 fatty acid why it is required the encapsulation or we can say control delivery because it's a protection from the oxidation the powder format the aqueous base is nothing but required for the food and uh, beverages then protection of the food product that is in probiotic we can say viability during the storage it is been required then phenolic compound are nothing but uh, taste masking because uh, these are having a, a little bit of bitter taste and that's why nothing but we can say and then along with that improve the viability the bioactive peptides are there example which can be a bitterness and astringency masking is very required so for these all uh, whatever the drugs or sorry whatever the ingredients we are selecting for the nutraceutical we have to encapsulate it or we can uh, use the various methodology uh, as we discuss so that can be a fruitful a product can be come out of it now we'll move towards the how the globalization or we can say global economical trend or demand the scenario of the component of neutrosotical market see i can give you a uh, uh, specifically we can say 2016 the global neutrosotical market was 198.7 billion it can be reached uh, by 2021 at the 285 billions then a functional beverages market is 71.5 billion in a particularly 2016 and growing up to cagr of 8.1% so in 1999 it was having a particularly we can say it has been double in the cagr from 1999 to 2010 so it has open a uh, particularly market and challenging opportunity for as a demand is increasing even the compound growth of the annual product is nothing but a 7.5% cagr of neutrosotical so this is nothing but we can see scenario so we have the lots of uh, we can see opportunity in the neutrosotical market 
and how academic uh, can play is an important. See here the example I'm giving you. The market opportunity for the global probiotic is increasing in a particular North America, rest of the world, the new opportunity it is. So uh, one of the example I can give you the uh, when I've gone through a particular we can see this slide. So one one example that is sea buckthorn oil. The one oil which has been available in K2 uh, plateau of uh, particular we can see Tibet where it has been available ample amount of plant and one company is uh, specifically dealing with the sea buckthorn oil only. And this Sivakton is having one, uh, they had developed one product that is Cytox and that having a 8 lakh 39 to 35 uh, particularly ORAC value. ORAC is nothing but how we, it is a measurable quantity of uh, how the absorbance of the reactive oxygen species. So that is ORAC value is very much accepted in the nutraceutically global market. Then vitamins, phytochemicals, where we can focus the phytochemical things. As uh, in previous lecture, Kunal sir had developed one analog of curcumin and they had developed a particular new, new era of curcumin that can be utilized in a uh, particularly we can say component. So this is nothing but we have to go in a new destination for the innovation. Molecules are there. We should not search a new molecule. We have to think about already the molecules are present in the market, but we can modify, increase the bioavailability of that compound. So that is a necessity. Nowadays, it is a requirement of the market. In COVID condition also, Calmec, uh, which immunity booster, when we are discussing immunity boosters, the many products are available in a, a pharmacognosy or we can say herbal product. Why not we can change that product or nothing but in the nutraceutical formulation? We can because the immunity is booster that component. So likewise, the scenario market opportunities are more and academic researcher can go for it and can develop in at least one product in a specifically in his life so that it can be work out properly and we can get the benefit of it. And then when we think of the next slide, I will go. See, uh, which are the, uh, we can say, a requirement, which are the requirements are there for the targeting of, uh, we can say, age group. Because age group targeting is very much important in the nutraceutical. When we think about the age group, why I'm thinking about, because nowadays if you find a, a young children having a calcium problem, calcium absorption problem, so that is nothing but we can say, or calcium supplement is given by the doctor. <coughs> So many of the, we can say, infants are there that health maintenance or we can say young children, teen, adult. So this, that can be an area where we can focus. To help benefited targets, nothing but the heart, brain, bone. Alzheimer is one of the, we can say, good target. Nowadays, the Alzheimer neutrosophical, which is supporting the particular brain value is very much important. Even lupin had... A uh, lupin had a develop a uh, one formulation which is nothing but enhancing the brain power. And we having the we can say Shanka Pushvi, then Brahmi, which can be incorrupted because Ayurvedic legalist legacy is there in India. And that <coughs> is nothing but the benefit we can utilize. So when we think of it, so weight control, pain relief, diabetic control, bodybuilding, improve life expectancy. See, these are the area where we can use and the, we have to target like halal, kosher, vegetarian, gluten free it should be because in US it has been accepted that only gluten free a particular component. So we have to mention on the label claim because label claim is very important in nutraceutical division. Now when we think about the nutraceutical division, so in that a regulation in India, I will go to, uh, firstly, I will go to the next slide because uh, before 2006, when it has been developed, the various other laws have been utilized. So it is coming the nutraceutical previously, before 2006, uh, nutraceutical have been regularized under the prevention of the Food Adaptation Act, then fruit product order, milk fruit product order, then a particular vegetable oil product order, edible oil product or packaging order, uh, then solvent extracted oil, ghee oil meal, and edible food <laughs> milk and milk product order. So likewise, uh, various uh, 
uh, act has been regularized uh, the neutraceutical but after came in the fssi that is nothing but we can say uh, in 2006 so this uh, regulation of neutraceutical is under the food for the special dietary use in india and that is under the food safety and standard authority of india that is fssi has been established in 2006 and it is controlling the regulating the manufacturing storage distribution sale and import of the ensure the availability of, of safe wholesome food product for the human consumption so likewise uh, we can say a uh, regularization body is uh, present in india but in if you compare the regulation in a specifically other countries it is having a somewhat different as compared to the india the productive evaluation parameter which can be considered under the uh, fssi is nothing but developing the extract of document developing extract of document is specifically uh, we required a lots of data to be cover review of literature if uh, you are A drug is approved by the FSSR or approved drug list. Then you can proceed further with the review of literature, then <clears> clinical <throat> food analysis. After before that, additive each and every additive should go for the analysis of that particular component for the COA. That is certificate of analysis is required. Then sample dispatch concerning authority is nothing but a bulk packaging or single packaging. So likewise, various uh, we can say aspects are required for the product evaluation, and it is a very tedious process. But it is been now simplified by the Indian government from the 2020-20. That is nothing but we can say new amendment had. in fssi so in that uh, license which is required is nothing but import licensing manufacturing licensing marketing licensing now uh, with the uh, amendment of the 2020 20 that is nothing but we can say 2020 we can say we call uh, that uh, fssi act is nothing but uh, we had modified and it is very simplified process for licensing we can go for the a form a and <coughs> Has been required. So in that, is been uh, very importantly we uh, when we go for the registration, the registration is required. The form A, form B, and form C. Along with that, we require the licensing for the central assess, then state assess, and particularly for the regional. Or we can say so the full component. It's very easy process now. Form A we have to fill up. Form B we have to fill up. So that is nothing but we can say depend upon the uh, your turnover. That has been simplified. Previously it has been there. Uh, there is a, a three a different uh, we can say forms was there. But now it has been simplified. But it has to be able to be come in the regularized process. Now health and label came, which is nothing but a one of the heart we can say heart of the nutraceutical product. why i am saying heart of the nutraceutical product because there is a regulations are coming depend upon the health and label claim when we think of the specific labeling and packaging requirement it is been specified by the regulating authority that what is the label contain which are the claims are there which is a structural and functional claim it's a clinical data has been completed so we have to submit a copy of it clinical evaluation then consignment of the packaging what it is been it is been tetra pack or it may be having a different uh, uh, whatever the we can say uh, different methods we are utilizing for the packaging so it is very important we have to think about the packaging consignment of the label content of it then uh, just i am giving you one example of it see here see a uh, dabur honey is honey is nothing but we can say it is one of the now considered as a nothing of food product so we have to require the name of the food list of the ingredient nutritional information declaration of the re uh, regarding vegetarian and declaration of the regarding the food additives which are utilizing coa of every product nowadays uh, i i really uh, we can say uh, somewhat in indian system we were supposed to eat uh, some other snacks like was laddu and all we can say but uh, now the tyson is one of the we can say company who had launched the snacks bites it just like as a laddu we, uh, we are we supposed to call but uh, in indian system but they had prepared these like snacks that having a emerge we can say energizing snack bites is their prebiotic snacks is their prebiotic having a one lakh live bacteria particularly which is helpful for the gut 
then probiotic uh, snacks also there then uh, particularly we can say this is coming from the thai soil which has uh, i have gone through and really it is a nice product which which are available in the market and it is online products which has been available then indian company wise uh, dabur honey you can see the uh, various uh, respect of particularly we can say uh, labeling condition are required and uh, nutritional value of it and then functional which are the additives we have likewise we have to uh utilize this all points we have to cover in the label tree so that is uh, one of the heart uh, that's why i call now the registration process uh, before 2020 it is nothing but a registration of form a application is in process by the authority within a 7 days and then inspection is done within a particularly 30 days that uh, if it is rejected because of some reason that it is been known within a 7 days then approval site approval for of the site manufacturing shall be applied for the licenses form b And that a is a unique application number which has been provided and that will be take for the 60 days for the granting a license then if it is queries arrive from the incomplete application that we can utilize now uh, when we think about this registration process uh, whenever we are thinking about the registration process uh, this nothing but it's very simplify now by the government of india and uh, the ministry which has been there and it has been uh, very important it has been seen uh, that procedure is so simple now so that you can easily easily uh, approval get the approval but the process we have to follow and that is you will get the easily the approval of it now uh, when we think about uh, the uh, comparison of uh, usa and india the comparison of the regulatory of uh, we can say of us us is under the uh, we have to submit the application of uh, licensing and registration under the uh, united state food and drug administration that is us fda calling now in india it is a uh, all is thing under the fsci control then the definition of particular dietary supplement what were the requirement is given in the dietary safety and health education act in 1994 it has been uh, published then our is nothing but 2011 now the 2020 has been amendment has been came and the regularization as per the 2020 and that has been utilized so these are the uh, various we can say regulation bodies are there and that can be utilized in many of the countries likewise uh, in india we are using fssr now uh, just a uh, point is what how we can go for see uh, i can share you one experience that uh, i was working on a particularly we can say one uh, oyster which is nothing but having a calcium content and it is a waste product so now uh, i am under the project i am having this uh, finance project from the department of biotechnology and we had developed a calcium and we are trying to develop a gummies or we can say trying to develop a chewing gum likewise or toffees likewise so that it will incorporate and the waste material which is been present oyster that can be converted into nutraceutical form now it is undergoing the process and once uh, we will get the coa of it then we will develop a particular new uh, formulation that can be usable and we we are having a emphasis of uh, that marketing of that product or advertising of that product uh, and undergo for the patentization for the process also and that is nothing but uh, we can move on the academic researches is one of the heart they can utilize uh, they can undertake a very nutraceutical formulation development and definitely they will get the success and companies are very much accepting such a from the academic research i can give the example of a uh, one uh, one person i don't want to uh, disclose the identity but from the one one of the reson uh, we can say renown institute he is getting a particularly his product has been approved by one company and he get a particular we can say he converted is a millennial in the particular we can say because of one product so it is has a chance that everybody can go in emerging business and growth because after some years we are thinking about only the nutraceutical not the medicine and how the phytochemical or indian ayurvedic legacy can help see when we think about uh, the component the phytochemicals so we have had gone through many other phytochemicals are present in india and we can see in ayurveda we have studied say example herbal honey one of the interesting example i can give with the new, new zealand and the australian that is known as a manuka honey manuka honey is a one of the product which is nothing but of 
the honey it is honey only but it is known as a medicated honey and it is has a very good anti bacterial activity and the costing i will show you in next slide so how the people are marketing their own things so likewise in ayurveda it is proposed as medicated honey so we can utilize we can take a base of ayurveda and we can work out a nutraceutical development which can be alternative for the prescription drug because many of the nowadays in covid 19 everybody is thinking about the immunity booster so shatavari is there that we can convert that is edible things which can be which we are eating from long and ancient time i can give you the example of kumari asa one of the ayurvedic preparation and that uh, is a very good immunity builder which uh, builder compound so that we can use a herbal base along with the ayurvedic medicines along with the things the example a study also we had gone through the uh, dr chaya ma'am uh, slides that piprin how the piprin is increasing the uh, bioavailability so we can convert this product into palatable form like jam chocolate cheese cakes capsule form or it may be bedlets or it can be converted into legacy palatable form that is nothing beverages we can develop we can develop the many things from this particularly so this is nothing but india plays an important role because everybody inclination towards the health and nutrition nowadays in a covid uh, particularly we can say era everybody thinking on the immunity booster so that is nothing but one of the area where we can work out and we can get it and this is nothing but opportunity to challenge is coming but we can change that challenge into opportunity form see this is one of the we can say a true healthy nutraceutical one of my student company who is uh, delivering a uh, many of the nutraceutical product in that one product is that that uh, phenolic so in phenolic we were uh, suffering from the palatability so that is a uh, one of the product uh, now uh, phenolic because it is uh, having a trigonella the lactoman in particular we can say uh, which producing uh, specifically it is reducing the anti diabetic it is used as anti diabetic and we having the clinical data of it product also this two healthy nutraceutical is belong to very good uh, company which is an emerging company in india nowadays and uh, they having a one another product which is nothing but a override override is a one of the component is nothing but herbal then uh, this mega shine is a uh, specifically containing a, a product that is nothing uh, we can say flax seed oil then collective so like this you can develop uh, many products which based on the ayurveda now uh, i can give the example uh, which is available see the manuka honey manuka honey is nothing but a, a honey bees are nothing but collecting a nectar from this leptospermum scoporium the leptospermum scoparium is particularly we can say plant where the honey bees are collecting the nectar from it and honey which is being collected and it is a acceptable throughout in india see the costing of that product sorry throughout the world it is been accepting and it is a product available from the new zealand and australia specifically and that product is known to be monofloral manuka honey which is a costing see 500 gram is having a costing of 4000 so like this is nothing but a product which can be so we can use the base of the ayurveda base of the pharmacognosy phytochemical and we can incorporate it into food so that we will get the benefit of it academic researcher has a great opportunity to develop such a nutraceutical formulation now the see when we think about another product we can say black garlic see black garlic you may be interesting uh, know what you mean by black garlic the black garlic is a one of the we can say moiety uh, so it is a fermented one it is a not a caramelization which is not a caramelization of at all of garlic but you have to control the temperature control the manners of the temperature and along with that chemical reaction that is millard reaction is been followed for the several days and that will convert in the very good moiety that is known as a black garlic and this black garlic is a one of the nutraceutical component which is been utilized nowadays that is having a costing then we were thinking about the this sea buckthorn oil so sea buckthorn oil is a one of the we can say poor Georgia company is working on this sea buckthorn and that came in the limelight because of only one single product 
because of one single drug cytrox, which is coming from the sebuctan oil. And that sebuctan berries, these berries are nothing wild growing plant. It can be stable at a minus 42 degrees Celsius. It can be stable at a 40 degrees Celsius also. And that one product is came into uh, any company can come into a limelight, and that is nothing but we can say it is a available and now demanding product because it has a ORAC value is very much. And the Pure DI is one of the company who had. Uh, develop the formulation uh, cytrox, which is a one of the we can say a good, very good antioxidant activity, having a number of times faster or we can say active than the uh, grape seed extract. Grape seed extracts and nothing but a one of the we can say uh, one of the good antioxidant. But sebuctone having a number of times more than that of uh, uh, see, uh, grape seed extract, and it has been published later. And their product is running worldwide, and with the one world one component that company came in the limelight of the nutraceutical market. So it is very importantly the academic researchers has. So uh, here I am ending my session within a 50 minutes. That uh, really I really I thankful to all the organizer team and uh, specifically my uh, principal sir, uh, Dr. Mohan Kali and principal sir of uh, Dr. L H H Shiramani College of Pharmacy, Dr. Parak sir, Dr. Sanket, Dr. Harshal sir. Then all my team members that they had given me opportunity to speak here. But I say uh, at the end point, uh, within a two minutes, I can say academic researcher can with the use of extensive review of Ayurveda product, you can select the, some product and you can go and formulate a nutraceutical. The opportunity is waiting for you. So definitely I conclude my session uh, within a time limit of 47 minutes and uh, uh, the now session is open for the, uh, particularly we can say, uh, for question answer session. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for your valuable time. Uh, so, can we go ahead with the question answers? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma so, the first question is from Dr. Amartya De. Yeah. He is asking, uh, what type of nutraceutical need uh, to be developed in the present situation of COVID-19? Uh, see, uh, we were working from last one month, actually, my, uh, my colleagues are working on this product. And uh, really, I can say one product has been launched by the two LD nutraceutical as a COVID. -end. In that, uh, the product is a very good antioxidant. So nowadays, the immune boosting is one of the very good important factor. See, nobody is thinking about the child immunity. That, uh, Dr. Sir, I can uh, give you suggestion that you can develop a product on the basic of immunity. The COVID required the immunity should be built up in the children as well as immunity is requirement in the particularly senior most people. So seniority wise, the immunity when it is get reduced, so that is a one of the era. Then another opportunity I can say one of the digestion problem. So digestion in nowadays because of the, our habits and the uh, things whichever we are routing, we are utilizing. So uh, digestion problem is there and that digestion can be, you can see the many of the advertisements are there, a nutraceutical product, a herbal product. So you can develop such a product and no need to go for the new molecule. I'm saying again and again, there are a number of molecules available. Only development of innovative product is very important. You have to design the product. Likewise, I can appreciate the Kunal sir here developed the curcumin. Because curcumin is liquid soluble, it is not water soluble. And that is a very much important task because curcumin nowadays the micronized micro emulsions are available, but the bioavailability. So I can give you a suggestion, sir. Immunity booster, diabetic, these are the very well-known and we can say we have lots of scope in this. And the uh, one of the, pro uh, nowadays it's aging. Aging, because everybody want to be young. And for that, we can uh, use that product. And that is nothing but aging is one of the, we can say cosmetic wise, uh, it is required. Really, really it is required. And I can say immunity booster, it's well-known. For next four years, I can say immunity booster will have the market of almost $50 billion. I can say $50 billion. So that is nothing but we can say, I can say this is nothing but immunity boosting. I can give you a suggestion that you can work on this. And many of the immunity products are available and immunity boosters are available in phytochemicals. You can use a Tulsi, you can use a Shatavari, you can use a, uh, many of the, we can say, uh, vitamin C, everybody's thinking about Amla, you can utilize. Chavan Prash, 
chawan prash ingredient you can use kumari also for the children you can utilize the many of the all ayurveda product you can get the benefit line of a, a component for the if you want to be a select a component you can go and find out in ayurveda there are number of components available and just don't forget to interaction of it because ayurveda is basic a mixture of the many component and that interaction is nothing but giving the effect and that we have to focus on uh, i hope it has been clear from my side ma'am okay thank you so much sir our next question is from mr nandan sarkar patents on ayurvedic formulation is possible or not no ayurvedic formulation patent is not possible i can say ayurvedic proprietary you can go for it but it require the clinical data but uh, say example i am giving you uh, say example nowadays uh, we require the bitter tonic that is calmic so in calmic there is andrographolite so if you develop the method to isolate that andrographolite likewise if you correlate the four to five ingredient which has been isolated moiety and if you go for the extensive review of it clinical data isolated data accuracy and precision precision is very important in extraction i can say then data is related to identification isolation characterization if you mix up the four component Four to five component with a very good review of literature and data, and it has been approved by the Indian FSSI. The Indian Act FSSI uh, department has to be. Uh, there is a list of the uh, powders are available. List of the approved powders are available in the particular co approved components are available on the list of uh, FSSI site. You can go through it and you can select the component and we can justify that. So it can be patentable. Your formula can be patentable. Your extraction method can. Be the patent table because pure dia had given the example of pure dia company pure dia had developed a cyclox from the co2 that is a critical super critical fluid extraction they had isolated from the oil and the berries and they had been patentized in 2000 uh, itself and within a 10 year that company is billionaire so that is one of the we can say beauty of nutraceutical i can say it is increasing your pocket value also it is increasing your value also and it is increasing the helping value of also uh, i hope it is been clear from my side now uh thank you sir our next question is from uh, mr Chand chandrashekar reddy yes sir uh, yes, he is asking is advanced ayurvedic products also categorized under nutraceuticals Uh, somehow i advance we can say uh, because if you found a nutraceutical now one of the herbal component phytochemical is there itself it is there so that's why advance uh, uh, we can say product can be eligible under both the nutraceutical because i can say before the before the era of 2006 the calcium is not under the uh, nutraceutical but now it is came under the nutraceutical because the source is a uh, we can say natural the corals we are utilizing we are utilizing other species even spirulina is a herbal so uh, advance ayurveda means what uh, if you palletize if you convert that into isolated because nutraceutical demand is only moiety ingredient they are not thinking about the any uh, particular drug they are thinking about the ingredient or also it is been accepted now the enrich extract See, I I gone through one uh, article and one product in last year in USA they had been uh, isolated the astaxanthin. The astaxanthin is coming from the fish. Fish scales are there, na? That is nothing but giving a good astaxanthin. So that astaxanthin they had converted into product. So Ayurveda advance we required, but the basic thing is what we have to follow the norms as per specify the FSSI that is food. and main important is a dosage because nutraceutical had a problem with the dosage because it is a intensive value that any patient any consumer can get a product and but the thing is what my dosage is very important because one base you know the phenolic is nothing but we are giving a particularly one spoon that is nothing but it is a measurable quantity because uh, that we have to think uh, very importantly because in ayurveda if you convert that product advanced product into nutraceutical we have to justify dosage of the component that can be come by the analytical method or co and that we have to get the precision of it each and every time it should be repeatedly coming same quantity same uh, dosage form in a specific quantity so that is very important 
I hope so. It has been clear now. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, now I would like to hand over the session for to Sheetal, ma'am, for vote of thanks. <laughs> no vote of thanks required because I am a one of the organizer. <laughs> thank you, thank you uh, very much, Pritam, sir, for such an informative session. At the end, I will again thank all speakers for spending their valuable time. and to all participants for par patiently attending the session thank you all and see you all tomorrow morning at 10 am with this we are ending the session thank you thank you thank Bye. you thank you very much thank, thank you, you very thank much you. Uh, harsha sir heta shital ma'am pramata ma'am and sanket sir it's a very much important is sanket sir thank you sanket sir you had given me opportunity for this are <laughs> sir 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 it's really very nice talk ha huh? Thank you, sir. Thank it you, sir. was really very yeah. nice talk, sir. Thank you, thank you, sir. Very really informative. I hope uh, I really required that every academy from one college should get one product at least. So definitely, it will be increase our pocket. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. thank you all. Bye. 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 Bye.